There we go. Now I can put this one on and I sound a lot more organized than the last stream that I'm not even going to highlight later on. So yes, it does say we, uh, we're, we're watching Nintendo Sports. The category is talk shows and podcasts because I'm just watching over it. We'll get to that soon and that should all be good. And all the viewers are still here, so that's nice. <laughs> if you were attached to that last stream, I apologize. Now, let's sort out some other things. Drinks are available. That's what took me the longest uh, between this before the stream started. If you can't hear sound, maybe you should watch it on your phone or a, or a tablet if that's what you've got, New Little Crips. You know what? I shouldn't really be able to give you suggestions because you can't hear me giving you suggestions. Hoops. Right. Let's go to this screen, though it's incredibly wrong, so you're going to have to deal with it. First of all, hello. Uh, as you can tell, I've still got my old dolphin set up. My mic is on the wrong side of the camera. Excuse me, I do that every single time. Maybe that's the reason my mic always blips out when I'm uh, doing videos. Maybe I should keep it there. I also got a haircut like a couple days ago. It doesn't look good now that I'm seeing it there. Right, this is the dolphin, which we would want, technically. And I could open it up for a little bit. But I also want to go into the editor mode and then make an actual window capture. Um, well, let me first, before that, so that looks good, and I'm going to get rid of that. I need to go make sure nothing uh, sensitive is showing up on my windows that I'm going to capture, and go for that. Nintendo uh, UK, which is what I need for when we eventually look into that. Sorry, give me a moment, I have to sort out all this. Uh, where did that go? This is what we need. Reminder is set, starting out in 48 minutes, beautiful. Let's get in a window capture that captures it. I'm going to keep that one there, because it's good. Let's get a new one to We're going for all the main uh, Pokemon things, aren't we? Okay, new source. This is to be that one. Ooh, that's a big white screen. Can you not show Firefox? What's going on here? That's not what it's supposed to look like. Come on, window capture. You're better than this. Uh, is there something else I'm connected to? Do I have to... I guess it doesn't like Firefox. Okay, cool. Fine. Get rid of that thing. Let's keep that link and open it up in... I don't have Chrome anymore, do I? Do I have Chrome? No, I got rid of Chrome because it wasn't working. Oh, I'm going to have to use the Internet Explorer. Oh, everyone's favorite. Okay. I mean, I'm full screen in it anyway, so it probably shouldn't make a difference. Although it's trying to load YouTube Studio, so we might have to wait a week before I can actually use the damn thing. Chrome is not the master race. I had to change it for something. What couldn't it do? Oh, it wouldn't let me upload video, uh, upload thumbnails. No matter what I did, Chrome didn't allow it. So I, I had to switch to, I had to upgrade to Firefox. Um, now I am way too zoomed in. Can I zoom, why am I on 240 zoom in? Is that the default? That's not a good default. Okay. Lovely, that's a little better. My mouse is a big loading scene. I apologize that you just have to look at the dolphin down there, but we'll get to it. Um, <laughs> I'll leave that, I've read them now, so I won't get that notification. Cool. Internet Explorer, can you do that window capture? I would like it if you could. Ooh, is it even an option? I don't even, there's a lot of, what is, it's not that. It's not that. What one is it? I can't. Sorry for all the darkness. It's like not even showing up. What is. What is going on? It's Microsoft Edge, not Internet Explorer. So it must have been one of those. <laughs> um. There was like a billion Microsoft Edge ones. So it's not that one, that's just darkness. It's not that one, that's just darkness. It's not that one, it's just darkness. It's not that one, it's just darkness. All right, that's Studio Lab, Stream Labs. We don't need, oh. What is going on? I wanted to be grinding on a game this whole time. It's not gonna let me. Okay, I'm about to go to Display Capture if this doesn't work. Let me try one more time the insane route with Firefox, and then if that doesn't work, I'll have to make it a display capture, make it the sound of the desktop, which it's already doing. Streaming, man. I should have done this ages ago, but I wanted dinner before we started. Okay. I can see it on that screen. 
maybe I want another thing. Window capture, video cap. No, no, window capture is what we need. Now there is one Firefox one. It's just a white screen. Thank you, whoever that was. Childish guy, thank you for the follow. Maybe if I go somewhere else, it'll accept it? What if I make two screens? And then, like, there's two Firefoxes it can switch between. No? Does that not exist? Uh, ref refresh. Can I refresh anywhere? What if I get rid of that? Put on another one. With some dramatic Xenoblade music in the background. There are two. That one's all white. Lovely. And this one? That's all white too. Okay. Great. My favourite. In that case, it looks like we will have to do a display capture deal. Um, can I not make this full screen right now? Oh, that's weird. Okay. Okay. You'll have to see all the other things I've got on that side, which is bearable, I guess. Um, new source, please. Not that one. Thank you for automatically going to that one. There we go. You can kind of see what's going on now. That's my entire screen, including the bit at the bottom and my mouse. Um, right. Let's do some, some workings. So, you need to be down in the list. I'll put you above the thing, but not above the box. Oh, that's, it's gonna do that to me, isn't it? Okay. And then, just like everything else, doesn't like fitting into the box. Why do you do this? That one gonna have to do? Hold on, how's that look? That looks a little weird down here. Oops. Uh, that. Oh, it's because I've missed all that. Ah, oh, well, screw it. There we go. That still doesn't look quite right. Need to go a bit further. It won't let me go further. Thank you very much. Go that way then. And bring it down. Don't be a streamer, dudes. It's not fun. Okay, that's pretty much as good as we're gonna get. So that's that half set up. Right, that looks fine. When that starts streaming, we'll hear it for a start. That's good. So for now, let's minimize that. Or, oh, no, there we go. Get rid of that. Oh, I'll bring it back when we need it. No, even better. I'll have that there. I'll put it below. Saw it. And this guy, we can fix by having it play some Pikmin 2. It's gonna be our background, oh. We're gonna double down on this, aren't we, accidentally? That's fine, I'll just make it not, it'll, it'll disappear when the time comes. Uh, there we go, that goes there, that's all sorted. Volume goes down so that we don't blast our ears out with Pikmin. I get out my Xbox controller that wasn't even set up this whole time, and then we're good to go. So the plan is, Nintendo's World Championship Tournament is now, almost. It's at 7 o'clock UK time, it is currently quarter past 6. So we've got an hour of spare time, where we can have a chat about E3, because E3 has now properly kind of begun. I wanted to watch all the sports, even though I have no clue what's going in half the time. First one is Super Mario Maker 2, the thing I know the most about. Cool to see, there'll be interesting things. It's going to be uh, four contestants, one is the completionist, if you know him. Uh, going against some Nintendo designed levels. Maybe I'll do some analysis on that because it's fun to see. Uh, and other things that are going on are this not actually touching any of the controls. Thank you very much. Is a. Uh, after that, we've got Splatoon 2, and then we've got uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Figured it'd be fun to see. I almost broke the game. There we go. It's a little laggy now. It will be fine when I click onto it again. And when I go through the menu. In the meantime, I figured, while we wait and discuss what we're doing, I was going to do some grinding for this game. If you haven't been watching the streams, I've been playing this god-awful mod, which has been giving me hell. Everything's different. I might as well turn off the music now. The levels are differently designed. It's nighttime. Uh, creatures appear in different locations. And uh, it's, it's, it's hard. This is Pikmin 2 Lands of Torture. And what I've been struggling every time is I'm in the wrong area. So that's a nice start. Can I like reset? I would like to reset. Is um... Yeah, see there's a bowl bear already. Um... 
I don't have any, any sprays when I play the games and I play the streams and I haven't had time to grind it off stage, off stage, off stream, so I'm doing it now in the hour break as we chill, talk about E3 and get on with the sportsy stuff. The sun has decided to come find my left side. I'm sure I'll be fine, I'm just gonna be very glowy. Does that all make sense? I feel laggy. I was lagging then. I think it was the menu making me do that. I apologize. Let me get through this menu again and then we're good. EA is the first to start with E3, you are right. But there is the World Tournaments today at Nintendo. Um, I have a I have a Google Docs that like schedules it all out. I'm not gonna be able to make a lot of it. I can't make Bethesda and Devolver Digital because they're two, three o'clock in the morning here and I'm, I can't stream all day yet. Um, I'm moving house soon where I will be able to stream any time of day. I'm upgrading as a YouTuber, but I'm not there yet. But we'll see. Um, you wonder what they'll try for Luigi's Mansion, huh? Hold on. Uh, I'll be able to... Oh, we've got one white Pikmin. I forgot about that. Okay. Hold on. Let me do a minor little bit of prep now. And by that I mean pay attention to the actual game. And then I'll be right on track. You know what? Actually, I can just have 100. I don't care. You wonder what they will do for Luigi's Mansion 3? They went nuts with Dark Moon in the sense of, well, looks like everyone loved playing in one mansion, so why not give them six this time? That's a good point. We do know that Luigi's Mansion 3 is all in one towering hotel. I'm pretty sure that's pretty clear. I, I, I'm doubtful there'll be a second one. You know, maybe for like an online mode. Oh, that's a thought. So Nintendo are really diving onto online these days, right? Can we all agree on that? I'd be curious to see what they're doing next, because obviously they want, us, they want to advertise their Nintendo Online service, right? Also, don't be confused, the game is modded so things are in different locations. This is not where you can actually find berries in the actual game, in case you're wondering. Um, but we're going to be here the whole time, hoping none of the Pikmin die, getting on with their day. Um, yeah, I wonder how they're actually going to try with Online this time. Cool, they're fine. That ones might not be, but otherwise they're fine. Yeah, no, no, they're good. Ah, uh, alright. One, one didn't get in. Get rid of that one, please. That's a thought. What do they do? Like, look, because Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon online last time was just, um an online tower of four player. They might expand it. Uh, like there is the theory that there are multiple different playable characters. So maybe they'll play around with that a little bit more. I'm not sure. Because they're definitely paying more attention to this thing these days. Okay, there's no, there's no eggs there anymore. Your stream wasn't going, I had to re-enter the live stream for the action to start? Oh. Was that actually for this stream? Which is fair enough. Streams are streams are iffy these days, you know. Not much I can do. But no, I'm wondering if they're going to expand the online, do something different. I don't have many online ideas. Like competition and co-op just sound like the most logical answers. Or like, I don't know, like co-op boss runs maybe, or just outright co-op online play. What if there's like an online room that people can like go to and they'll see other Luigi's, or like a mirror room and you can see someone else in the mirror. Monado Artist, you're really excited to see the 3D world theme in Mario Maker 2. Looks really nice when the new mechanics, and I want to see whether people can take it. Yeah. I'm curious, actually, because I got Super Mario Maker 1, but I was terrible at it. I could play the games, for like the levels, fairly well, but making them, I just, I do not have a creative level design body. You know, it just, I can't come up with anything good, ever. So, um... I don't know, I'd have to, I, I'm probably going to be like analysing and reviewing the official level design in the hopes that it will give me a good idea of what to make in the actual game, because like I, I love the concepts, but I don't have like the brain power, maybe I just don't sit down on it enough, but like I just don't think of what to actually do with it. Um, maybe because I'll actually, I will probably be streaming it on day one, so maybe me actually sitting down and streaming as I'm making the levels, I'll be like, ah, oh, what if you combine the cart with 
the beating blocks. It'll do this crazy thing. I don't know. I think I was also I was slightly like turned down in that you could only make, you could only upload 32 tracks. So I was like, oh, what's the point? They're all, you know, there's so little options. And then I made like one, two. Yeah. And I think also because it loaded slowly, like you unlocked each part slowly. And I was like, I don't got time for this. Hmm. There was going to be a game mode in Dark Moon, supposedly, where you could just keep collecting ghosts for eternity, or rather, until you give up and lose all your health. Okay, a survival mode sounds like it could could have room for something. I could see that happening. Hmm. They'd have to do something more interesting about it, or like I don't, I don't know. I'd love a I'd love a classic mode. Like, if you could classically fight the same, even if it is just the same old portrait ghosts again. If Luigi's Mansion uh, advertises portrait ghosts again, they're, they're souls. They're golden. They're good. You know? Like, that's literally the one major thing. Like, obviously, atmosphere is something people want, but that's, like, a little bit more subjective. Some people don't mind the new atmosphere, and at the very end, you know, it's a bigger task to handle. But portrait ghost is just a single mechanic, single type of enemy, that if they bring back, it's just gonna sell loads. That's specifically what the fans want, you know? They just have to listen to that and their and their game is set. I mean, the game's probably already going to sell, but... I don't know, man. I did see an interesting video, actually, someone being like, Ah, oh, Luigi's Mansion 3 looks ugly. Here, I photoshopped the screenshots to look better. And I'll, I'll admit, I liked their, screen, their versions better. Obviously, they did the classic, Ah, oh, let's make the atmosphere darker and the lighting darker, like the first game. Which, you know, is easy pickings, but like... Still good, still looked better. I never realised how much the flashlight seemed completely useless in the new trailer for Luigi's Mansion 3 because you can see everything. The light doesn't add anything. There's no dust in the light bulb, it just... But hey, it's an early build, maybe it looks really good these days. Really dark. We'll see. Monado, if you have good ideas, just poor execution and it usually falls flat. See, I, I don't even get the ideas department. I'm like, what if there was three Goombas, and one of them was big. Yeah! Uh, I might have ideas now, but I would have to, uh, I don't know. I think I just haven't got the patience to master the execution. Or something like that. I don't know. I like I would just, well, we're talking between two games, it's fine. Hmm. Something like Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing, I haven't got a clue. Anything they show, if they show it, I'll probably be sold. I'm just in an Animal Crossing mood. Like, I've got New Leaf, but like, I don't... I'm in a weird state where like, I want to play New... I want I feel like playing Animal Crossing, and I feel like playing Pokemon. And I have New Leaf, and I have Sun and Moon, but I don't want to play them. Because the new one's coming out fairly soon. They're coming out this year, you know? So I'm like, oh no, i um, It'll waste my, you know, I don't want to get bored of the new game because I've just played it from playing the last game. So I'm like stuck in a loop of not being able to play the games that I'm in the mood to play. Because i got to wait. Oh, ooh, they survived. Nice one. So I don't know. I can wait. It's cool. It would be very fun, actually, if the Luigi's Mansion 3 trailer that they show at E3 segues into Pikmin 4. It would be perfect from the first game segueing into the trailer of Pikmin 1. Just, you know, works too nicely. I hope for it. How's it go? Oops, let's not whistle them. Well, I mean, it doesn't make them reset yet. That's Pikmin 3. You once tried to make a roller coaster boss fight while it was supposed to go in an infinite loop while fighting Bowser Jr., but even though I gave him wings so if he fell off he would come back, he would fall in different places and it was disorientating. Mm. I that would be interesting, like a, a boss fight on a roller coaster. Like they're all on tracks, and you've got to fight them as you go along before, like the pit at the end or something. Maybe. 
or like a. It'd be cool if you could recreate like like one of the pick the one of the Pikmin bosses in Hey Pikmin where you're going down a chute. That would be interesting. Like you got to beat them before you reach the bottom, and like defeating them, I don't know, gives you the key that gets you to the door on the outside. And if you don't, you just land in lava or something. Or just a, a warp pipe that takes you back to the beginning. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be cool to see. I don't know. <laughs> I've got to work out how to execute it well. It takes a lot of patience, I think. I feel like if I play Super... I'm drinking this way too fast. If I... Oh, don't do that, Pikmin. Um... If I play, well, when I play Super Mario Maker 2, I'm probably mostly going to play the online matches. Just play anyone's random levels against any random online people. I am disappointed that you can't play online with friends, but... And actually, no, that means I can't play online with fans. Oh, that does suck, suck actually. Ah, oh, That's some bad luck right there. But, get out of here, dude. Thank you. Hmm. What else could the the GameCube controller be used for? I don't know. I feel like it's mostly just a Smash thing. I don't think they care too much to put in more controllers. Well, I mean, they've obviously given us controller support. Maybe if they made old classic games, they made a you know brought Wind Waker HD. They'd be like, you can play on the GameCube controller if you wanted to. Not a good idea, but it's an option. You can play Pikmin 3 remastered on the Switch, but it's got the GameCube controller. I was thinking, actually, a lot of people were saying, oh, there's going to be a Pikmin HD trilogy one day. I feel like they might just remake the first one. Like, forget the trilogy. Just be like, here's Pikmin 1 again, while you wait for Pikmin 4. Maybe. So if you're playing this, uh, EBTKS Paddy says, uh, could that mean you might play Kaizo Edition once you finish this hack? Maybe, well, not right when I finish it, but um, Kaizo sounds like that's borderline absolutely impossible, right? Maybe? I'll give it a look. Last time I played a Pikmin mod was a year ago when I was playing Pikmin. So, I might have more of a gap. Give it a few months first. I would like to stream other games first. Like, I want to stream Super Mario Maker 2 when it comes out. I want to stream Cadence of Hyrule. I want to stream Pokemon Sword and Shield. I've got a lot of things on my to-do list. So whenever I find, like, a, a downtime moment, maybe. Give it a look. Give it a consider. It has just got around to 100% in Color Splash after I saw you play it a while. I always felt like the setup was too complicated for the bosses in particular. It forces you to have a thing card or two for a boss. Uh, for one boss. You're actually supposed to even run away from the fight, yet I never found anything that even remotely suggested that. I mostly turned to online guides. I don't know how I would feel if the same case was for a Paper Mario game on the Switch. Do you think there'll be Paper Mario on the Switch already? Is there time? Has there been enough time? I feel like maybe there could be a Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remake, but that's just because the, the director was directly told in an interview that that's what people want, and the fact that she didn't know I thought was kind of appalling, but hey, whatever. Well, we mentioned maybe she was just playing up to the role. Um, yeah. I would be disappointed with more Color Splash, I think, but at the same time, I'm in another mood to play Color Splash. I think if I start thinking of it more like an open world game, and just sort of, I don't know, the least favourite parts to me are the pathways, the puzzly pathways. But, looking at the world, like when I was researching the Paper Mario video, looking at all the locations in Color Splash, I was like, these look cool, these look nice. So I'm unsure. Maybe. I probably wouldn't want another one, but I might enjoy Color Splash a little bit. It would be cool if GameCube games were on the Switch. GameCube games are the only ones that haven't been remade. Does that mean it's an open way pathway for it to happen one day? They gotta cash in on those early 2000 nostalgia. I'm the perfect age for it now. I would play them all again, to be fair. If there's a Super Mario Sunshine remake, I'll play it. If there's a Wind Waker remake, they've already made it, actually. So that already ruins that theory. You get what I mean. And Metroid Prime, actually, so... But, you know, uh, more common stuff. They've kind of just 
left the GameCube off to the side. Oh, I was like, how did I go down? Because I haven't been, haven't been farming Pikmin. I probably should farm White Pikmin, but that, we don't have time. Hello, Josh Marill. Thank you for joining us on stream. We're playing some this of this in the background, grinding some Pikmin 2 Lands of Torture. And then when the game, when the, the thing properly starts, we will be switching over to... Uh, something that doesn't like... Oh, because I'm on display capture. Never mind, that didn't work. But it will be um, the Nintendo World Championship Tournaments. Uh, let me just check how that looks on my screen. Fine. 24 minutes and 52 seconds. And a lot of YouTube comments. It's been how am I today? I'm pretty good. I've had dinner for a first time before a stream. I should be quite like weighted down. I had a fajita with loads of loads of veg and wraps and stuff in it, but I'm good. I guess streams always hype me up. Um, did anything else happen today? A few things. Not much. It's a normal day. It's been a chill day. I had to avoid the house because of a house meeting. But now I'm streaming, I'm ready to be playing a bit of this, grinding along, I'm ready to see some world championships, ships, whatever, whatever. I'm also just interested to see more Super Mario Maker 2. It's the thing I'm probably most excited about out of the three things, probably because it's not actually been released yet, sure, but... Right. Come along. Do not wake up the couple of snaggerets. We might have even more now that it's day 21. This is a long let's play. It's not always this long, but this game demands that it be longer. The skill gap is ostensibly higher. But yeah, had a good time. My god, uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire has once again taught me that warp tiles absolutely suck, huh? <laughs> I really wanted to get that game, but then I was like, oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend more money on Pokemon. Give it a break. Or I think it was at the time where I really couldn't not touch and afford another game. I'm also just not in the habit of playing many games in my free time now. I'm like, if I'm playing a game, I want to be streaming it. So like, I don't, I don't do too much. Like, I don't, it doesn't help though that we're currently in the drought. Or we, yeah, no, we're still kind of in the drought of game that I want to play. Like first party, they're starting now. There's two first party game. If you count Kingdom Survival was first party coming out this month, and then I can start streaming the actual games that I want to play. But up to this point, it's just kind of been, let's play. A roller coaster tycoon esque game. Let's play The Simpsons game. Let's watch another Pikmin die. You know? You're gonna linger for way too long. Thank you. Here you go. I got a lot of ideas of what could. Pre like, I, I feel like I'm just gonna say all the things so then all my predictions will always be right, but. I don't know, they've gotta have some surprises. And I've been hearing a couple of rumors, but I don't believe them. You know? I feel like, and I feel, I really wish I said this in my predictions earlier, there's going to be two Smash characters announced for Smash this week. We're going to probably get one at the tournament, or at the very least one like midway through the E3, and then another one at the end of E3's Nintendo Direct. I didn't realise Nintendo was the very last one at E3 this year. So I'll probably be streaming today, I'll be streaming tomorrow at 8, because there's a conference at 9 I want to watch. And I'll be streaming on Monday, that's like 6, 6, when a conference is going on at the same time a video of mine releases. And then streaming uh, on Tuesday at like 4, in preparation for the, what, the Nintendo Direct at 5. So I'm streaming all next next few days, basically, is probably going to be the plan. I hope you don't mind. You need a Dynamaxed Waylord? I'm actually quite excited to see some of that. I'm really disappointed though that the wild area is one place. Like sure, it's a big circle and a pathway. It's big, a potion shaped location, but it's like, is it on the way to places? Like on the map, there's a giant, you know, labyrinth of cities up north. So like, if I get that far, do I then, if I want to get more Pokemon beyond that point, do I have to go back on myself? Do I go back to that area multiple times? Or is it in the... Like, if it was a one area that like maybe became more accessible as you went along, but it's in the way of all the cities, so you'll keep going to that same area, but at different points, and you could like fast travel through it or something, maybe that would be better? But the fact that it's just one area that's mostly just in the same location, and then it kind of goes a little on its own. If it was more like a branching path that you call connects itself, cool. But I don't know. Ooh. 
Ooh, what is going on? I'm hearing music. We're apparently preparing for the thing. Well, I better learn to minimize things. We got a uh, rules going on, and I immediately just made this not live. Is this just gonna be the rules for the whole like 15, 20 minutes? We don't need to hear the rules. We'll come back to this later. And I'll keep an eye out on the time. Is that alright with people? I don't think you need to hear the rules on a loop for 20 minutes. But I guess the, the tournament's starting soon. In fact, you know, maybe I'll just set an alarm. You know what? I'll set an alarm. Oh wait, I can't miss it. Um, 8659, that'll cover us. Lovely. You'll be study. You'll be in the school studying for exams while the news happens. Sweet. Assuming that means you're at home doing it. How do you feel about the new Dynamax mechanics of Pokemon Sword and Shield? It totally like, it totally feels like devastating attacks could destroy the stadium if you Pokemon can miss it or dodge. It does. I get that sense. I'm excited-ish for it. I'm excited because you could do it with any Pokemon. It's more diverse. I can see why people are disappointed, which is why if they do expand it with Giga, uh, what was it Gigantamaxing? I'll be more excited. If it is just that, I can handle it. But it's just kind of okay, if that makes sense. That's probably my thoughts on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what, if I'm directly attaching like this, then I might as well. <laughs> Under normal circumstances, the entire audience would die in nearly every Dynamax battle. That sounds about right. Curious to see how that'll work in the Pokemon anime. Oh, wow, they went away quick. Okay. I am very much overpowered and ready now. Nintendo UK has tweeted about the tournament. It's getting started soon. It is It is still just the, uh, yeah, it is still just the rules on repeat over there. Which is cool. It's fine by me. Your excitement, ugly but proud 15, your excitement for Maker 2 is slowly fading and it's not even because of the no online with friends thing. Interesting. Why then? Like, I can understand, that is a big blow, the online thing. Is it just like too much time has passed? Because it's coming out soon. It's like the 28th, isn't it? Or something like that? It's very soon. Maybe it's July. I think like, it's June though. I don't remember. That, that old date video is way in the past. Let's just hope no fire fighting for Sword and Shield. If the leaks are to be believed, it already is happening. It's a pure fire type, but has fighting moves. It is very boring how they keep doing that, isn't it? Footballers aren't even fighters, man. Do you think it's possible for evolutions like Mega to be stacked on top of Dynamax? Probably not. I'd like them to, but they probably won't actually combine them, you know? Like, it's too complicated. I don't think they'll be able to explain it very well. Maybe in some kind of custom mod it'll be interesting. But it sounds like Gigantamaxing is going to be their actual version of it all. What are you getting out for? What did you detect? That's not fair. No! You're going to ruin it for everyone else! Ah, and they proceeded to ruin it for everyone else. Oh, actually, no, do it all at once. Do it all at once. All at once. And then if you're close together like that, then they can't bite you all. Because you all aren't in like a long straight... Oh, well, okay. If they come out like that, then... No, 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 they, you're good. You're all good. It's perfect. A perfect little land train. When did the other guy show up? Oh, I guess I never laid them out this today. Maybe you're just burnt out from 2D Mario? Fair enough. I can kind of see that. I'm a little bit more reinvigorating seeing all the things you can do in Super Mario Maker 2. But then even then, Mario Maker 1 like died for me after one week. So maybe this will be the same. I think I don't need online with friends part too badly. I'll survive without it. So I think it'll just be sort of... What? Why? Why is someone out in the middle of nowhere? 
I don't know. I think it'll just come down to how good the online experience is, I guess. Me streaming it will probably make it also last longer for myself in a weird little way. I need the go here feature. It's not going to happen. But I need help. In 1989, Mother 1 was released in Japan, making this year the 30th anniversary for the Mother series. Sure would be awesome if we could get some surprises from Nintendo, like Porky for Smash DLC or a localized Mother 3, but I think I'm being too hopeful. Yeah. Why don't they change it? Is it that hard to like make an an uh, a new edition of Earthbound that's not controversial in this day and age? Like they have been quiet, haven't they? Have they been quiet about the Mother 3 30th anniversary? Because if they're being quiet, then it seems suspicious. Maybe if they're like, oh hey, it's the anniversary, yay, then it's like more likely that nothing's gonna happen. But if it's full on like, oh, we're not gonna say anything, because then we can celebrate it properly later, then, you know, suspicious times, you know? No. I'm automat- my controller is having issues. I don't care, just take him. I know you want to. Go on, be free. Don't get eaten on the way out. Pikmin 4 is in development, would you like another kind of berry ability? I'm not sure if they'll go back to classic Pikmin 2 set or 5, if they're gonna pack- What? Or Pikmin 2 set of 5 Pikmin or Pikmin 3 set, or if they'll go for something entirely different. I'll admit I do like the rocked and winged Pikmin, but I could live without them. I don't know what I want. I'd want new Pikmin! I would want two or three new Pikmin. But I don't know how they'd incorporate it. Yeah, it's still doing the rules over there. But I could see them replacing the rock and winged. Making them another challenge mode type or having them... I don't know. They're, they're like digging themselves a hole with each game, I guess, aren't they? If they add three, though, then we've got a nice solid ten Pikmin types to play with. Which, I mean, I guess could be complicated to people and definitely complicated for level design. But it's taken long enough. You know, they don't need to rework the engine, really. Like, maybe a little bit for the Switch upgrades, but... I don't know. I don't think I've heard anyone from Nintendo talk about Mother for years. Oh, uh, they made a joke about it. They, uh, the, the... Reggie... Stop motion animation made a joke about Mother 3, and then... Reggie burnt... Him. The fan that wanted the Mother 3 remake, and then... They just didn't do anything else. Like, a uh, Huh. Yeah, it was just that was just like a just a jab at the fans, really. I think it was because it was a joke made by someone else, is why it got in. You know, it was the what was it Robot Chicken, the animators that did that. But still, it didn't. It came out untasteful or distasteful, excuse me. Go back to your hidey holes. Thank you. So I'm gonna end up with six or nine of each potion. That's pretty nice by the end of this. I won't be grinding while we're- oh, I might do a little bit of grinding actually as we play. I'll have it muted if I can. Um, you know, while we watch the game. Let's see, I am really thirsty. It's probably the sun. Wing Pikmin in Pikmin 3 is broken? Is it? They're really weak. It's only really their location, like their, their abilities to go places. I made a mistake. No, no, I haven't. I'm good. Has the champion stream started yet? It has not. It's just looping the music and the rules. Trust me, I don't want to miss it either. <laughs> so, like, yeah, technically the stream has started, but it's just it's just rules looping. Not as interesting. I realise I'm still on editor mode here, not live, so let me fix that over here. Excuse me. I needed to lean over so I can actually see without the sun taking out my sight. I am good. There's a few people that have followed over over between streams, I'll say it now, even though I can't really read it. 
So thank you for the follow, Jack Stonehouse. Caps H. Relatively good snipes. Awesome snack. Childish guy again. Oh, you've got a YouTube version and a normal version. Well, thank you for following on the YouTube version. It ends in YT. Uh, Sonic Sonic 98765, I think that was. That makes sense. It's just going down in numbers. If I scroll, I might blue screen, but I'm going to try it anyway. Lovely. Uh, Ciara Marshall. I haven't streamed in a long time, so I there's quite a lot to catch up on. Oh, no, there isn't. It's good. Electric Tape, which I feel like I might have said before in another stream. And Silver Snivy. I think I do remember those last two. Either way, that is us caught up on followers in between streams. Thank you very much. <sighs> How did you only now realise that Louis was a purple Pikmin? I have no idea. It should, it should have been the first thing you noticed. It's very, very obvious. Wait till you see what the purple Pikmin are. And even then, actually, Louis isn't a purple Pikmin. That's the president. That's the president you're seeing. Louis exists in another form here. Actually, does he? Yes? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Louis exists in another form here. Took me a while to realize what he was. Where are those models? Where's the models of the thing that Louis is? I'll find them one day. And the thing that the other type of Olimar re replaces. Where are, uh, oh no, that's what Louis was, okay. But we're still missing the thing that Louis is in this game, but the original models of them. That makes sense? Oh well. Right, you guys have fun and all, but first, going over here, okay, okay. If you try to feed carrots to the enemies in Pictopedia, they'll devour Olimars, yes. And it's exactly what it is. And Louie in this game is a giant pick pick carrot. Spoilers. You should watch the series if you haven't already. It's on YouTube. Daz Let's Plays. Well, that was an unlucky roll now, wasn't it? Wow, two unlucky rolls, huh? Wow. I mean, not as bad as that guy. Alright, and. Oh, you know, we're oh, fine. That's gonna. We're gonna lose out on a bit of spray because of that now. <laughs> the pink flowers on the Pikmin that should have white flowers is kind of disorientating. Oh, yeah. You were so caught up on the model thing, you didn't even notice the whistle. Yeah. They catch ya. This game's a joker. Let me check the stream again real quick. I can't see my left screen. It's just all sunshine. Ooh, it has changed. It's changed to just not the rules. Oh, no, no, it is the rules. It went right back to the rules again. This is all 20 minutes of rules? Come on, Nintendo, you're better than this. We're not that focused on it. We just want to see the games. What are you waking up to? Oh, you were going away. Okay, cool. There's also a treasure somewhere around here. I guess it's up that way. Not quite normal. Excuse me. Howdy, gamer, and how you doing, Streven with an R? I keep saying Streven with an R, but that's just how I've decided to call you now. Streven. Excuse me. How are you doing? You ready to watch some Nintendo World Championships in seven minutes while I grind in Pikmin 2 Lands of Torture? Because that's exactly what's going on. Now you know. I could really use that bit of spray, but I'm not going to get it. The treasure up here. How have you gotten three again? What is with your luck today? Who let this happen? Well, ain't you doing great today.
Come on, dudes. Oh, come on. Well, at least they're going to be equally not getting us any berries soon. Probably this next one's not going to give me any of them. Okay. Rules. It's it's still rules. I'm good. Streamer, thank you for asking. Not much is going on. Intent, uh, E3 is starting up now-ish. Tomorrow. The sun has decided to come back, but you know, just chilling out. I'm currently trying to move house. That's been a, a fun mess, but it's going along. And then in uh, three weeks, I'll be somewhere new. With boxes all around me. Don't know how I'm going to move this desk, but I'll make it through. Someone else built it for me, so I don't know how to build it. So I can't de-build it. Deconstruct, that's the correct word. Oh. To be fair, they need to fill the screen with something while they wait for people to get late notifications. Oh, I guess that makes kind of sense. Who is presented tomorrow? EA? Yes, EA is starting. Nintendo is finishing. Nintendo is on Tuesday. EA is tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Every single time? Every single time you're going to do this? Every single time they're going to do this. Every single time they're going to do this. And there goes another three. Just like that. Just, just like that. We no longer have the funds and the people. We have to go single file for all this. Do you have a particular favorite flavor you enjoy? Ice cream. I've always felt like Oreo cookies and cream have been my favorite for me. Chocolate. Why complicate things? Chocolate is all you need. I always, just chocolate. Chocolate flavored chocolate. Double, triple chocolate. It's all good. Makes me as excited as that one Pikmin there. I don't need anything else. Always chocolate. Never vanilla. Strawberry, no. Banana, ew. Oreo, it's okay. Mint, definitely not. Chocolate, yes. Chocolate flavored of chocolate syrup and another scoop of chocolate. Good stuff. That's the good stuff. That's how it goes. You hear me? I'm a simple man. I'm a mild man. Not a big fan of spices, but chocolate on ice cream. With ice cream, it is the ice cream. Yeah. Let's watch more Pikmin deaths today, shall we? Ah, oh, dearie me, I can't wait. Should be illegal. These snaggrets are illegal. I uh, know. I have to skip this day halfway through soon. Where are we at? We're at 58. Yeah, that's fine. I'll 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 restart. I'll I'll end the day in a moment. In fact, I'll probably end after these berries, just to be safe. Cool. No one gave us issues. Though, even if it starts playing, we'll we'll know the music will be going on in the background. So please just get here a little faster, guys. And then we're good to go. Now I'm not I'm not much of a sports fan, and I'm probably not going to be too loud this this uh, watching this, but I'll I'll try and get involved, you know. I'll try and I'll pick a team and I'll I'll root as best I can. I won't be the best, but I you know I'll give it a good old go, I guess. Um, yeah, there we go. That's that's six fifty nine. Cool. All the all the Twitters on the Nintendo are going off now. UK of America, Nintendo of America, and UK. Chocolate and peanut butter. Ew! Get rid of get rid of that. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. 
I just want to win this. We're going to save... What's that? Eight? Eight potions each? I'm going to do amazing next stream. Let me save. Thank you, Grandma. Get out of here. Lovely. Okay. With that in mind, we will have to go back to the editor mode. Excuse me. Excuse the lag as well. And i got to scroll. You are now hidden away, and you will be deleted. Yes. Uh, where is... Well, I... There we go. We will probably get all sorts of copyright issues because of this. There we go. That should look good on there, right? Yes, it does. Sweet. We're all good. I don't know what it's playing. I don't have this song. Is it Splatoon? No, I have all the Splatoon. Oh, well. Just in time. Or the music just wanted to end, and we're just going to be put in the depthly void of nothingness. I mean, that works too. The void it is. I haven't paused it, have I? No, no. Anyone commenting anything good? No. Just a lot of nows, a lot of here we goes. Oh, here we go, hello. That was a little delayed. I'm going to turn up the volume as well. I only know one of them. And suddenly the microphone. Welcome in, I'm Jordan Kent, and joining me fresh out of a couple of warp pipes, my two friends, Fish and Nine, and Fish, as we get set for Super <laughs> Mario Maker 2. Many people have had a chance to play Super Mario Maker, now we have the sequel coming out. But for some folks, this is their first taste of Super Mario Maker action. Scrubs. What do you expect to see, and explain it a little bit further. They should have got the Wii U, they're not real fans. Super Mario Maker before. It's whatever your heart desires. You are in control of making the Mario levels of your dream. Basically, you can take elements, enemies, and components from different Mario games and create your own level. Everyone that's watching this knows, but sure, creators all across the world. I'll humor you. Basically, whatever you want. The possibilities are limitless. Well, guys, you know I'm a dad now. I love rules. Let's take a look at the tournament rules here for today for Super Mario Maker 2. What does he? What does you being a dad have to do with it? I thought we were looking at these for 20 minutes. Whatever. Of course, as quickly as possible. That's mm. the speed run for you. The player with the best overall time will choose a partner to team up with in round two. Because when we get to round two, co-op teams. Teams of two work together to complete a co-op course as quickly as possible. The winning team will compete against each other in the finals and when whoa we it's a revenge plot we turn things over on its head two players compete on three mini courses and one final course each win of the three mini courses is worth a three second head start on the final course okay at the end the first player to complete the finals course will be the super mario maker 2 invitational champion and nine We'll get a chance to meet so this is going to be a one-off. I'd like to see more of these. Four players that are very well versed in the Mario universe. However, when you get set to play Super Mario Maker 2 for the first time, you've never seen these levels before. How do you approach it? What's the guy in the middle reminds you of John Tron or Peanut Butter Gamer? He just got a lot of hair. Looks like not the uh, Jesse Eisenberg. But it's really a matter of mixed with, on the screen. Do you throw yourself right at it? I don't know. His face like looks like something else. Or do you instead take a little bit, spend 30 seconds here to save yourself a minute down the line? He looks like a we'll 90s protagonist. Risk versus reward all throughout oh. the competition and Vish handling the different physics of the different Mario genres. You're going to be controlling a Mario from one universe as you handle obstacles and traps that maybe appeared in a different Mario oh, okay. universe. How do these players I was like, what? What is this dimensional thing they're doing? Yeah, I think it really comes down to experience at the end of the day. Like, if you're well... What does it take to become an actual official commentator for this? Like, if I took this more seriously and I, like, I made the right connections, could I do this job? Could I wear a suit and headphones? I mean, I guess you have to have a certain sort of tone of voice, and it's very... You gotta say the obvious. These courses are going to be very exciting. They were designed by our good friends. A little bit cringy as well. We know they have been done with care and love as well too. A lot of emotion 
put into these courses. But let's go ahead and take a moment to meet our core Great. competitors in the Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational. If you don't know who these are, there's one you'll know and the other three you might. So what's going through your mind while you're playing? Well... <laughs> Oh no, we've seen this footage before. I can't analyze this. I assume they're all YouTubers. I know one. Those are also new, uh, old. So what's going through your mind while you're playing? It's complicated. Oh god. Oh, uh, four terrific speedrunners that have had plenty of experience in the Mario universe to see the completionists. Are they all speedrunners? And Yellow Killer B and Nine, we were having some breakfast earlier. We chatted with them. They're excited for this. They feel like there's a clear You've seen two? The four of them, though. Fair enough. Yes, they do. Three of the four selected I... Dragon Feeny as the favorite. The one who did not was Dragon Feeny herself, <laughs> ever the humble competitor, but that first round is going to be really important because whoever wins that is going to get to choose their partner and it might She's be like, I'm on screen, what do I do? I'll just shivery shake. Stop looking at me, please. What is what are some things we Gerard doing? See as these players see the courses for their very first time. Well, the oh. Thing is there's, there's new oh, okay. There's new game type I thought he was just like, I'm in focus mode. No, he's just trying not to get spoiled. Gotcha, gotcha. Aside okay. from that, you have things like slopes, you have things like parachutes that are just going to add a new little element of surprise, and these players are going to have to deal with that. Sorry, I have to keep putting my hand here because it's all, it's all sun. Well, you look at I usually have an umbrella that I hold up in the middle of the room for bad luck, but I used it because it was raining today. Oh, look at that. That's just a holiday card right there. Bestest buddies. It's okay. You can smile, completionist. You're here having fun right now. <laughs> he can't hear me. Those work very well. I like that. So they obviously won't get a chance to be a couple of sneaky sneaks and see the level as it gets played, but as we get set for Yellow Killer B, and the dragon is he genuinely the nervous or something or I know. features and that risk reward as far as how fast you want to go through this nine versus maybe I dip my toe in the pool rather than take a can I hope they do sure well no they must do something creative with this I don't want just a normal fly, Mario level you know said, you can take maybe one path and try it a certain way maybe that doesn't work so the second time you might try it again you used to watch Abdallah huh okay. once shame on you fool me twice shame on me fool me three times you gotta change the game plan a little bit and Vish, it's one thing when you're back in the comfy confines of your living room or your bedroom playing this game and getting a Why is the dude in the back got a- oh, okay, he's not just security guys, he's got notes to make and timers to take. We've got a lot of people watching this through the stream and everything as well too. The nerves that might be going through these players real quickly here. Yeah, I mean, it is a big stage like you uh, like you mentioned, and it's the first time that we're seeing Super Mario Maker 2 in a stage like this. Uh, they have microphones. Can they, like, the pitch into... I imagine they will, actually, right? They must, they must be able to hear them screaming and shouting and a little bit. like a technical game like Mario Maker, or uh, Mario in general, while you're speedrunning is going to be very, very crucial for them to not feel nervous in the middle of their runs. Well, the wait is over. Let's hit the start button. The Dragon Sweet. Feeny versus Yellow Killer B, our opening speed run in round oh. one of the Super If Mario there's enough good new stuff, stuff in here, I will analyze it. Let's start the countdown. Two, one, and. Don't upload it on Monday. We'll see. As they get set, they'll be hitting the start button at the same time. The Dragon Feeny on the left hand side of your screen. Yellow Killer B on the right. And already oh. nine. What genre of That's some loud. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> audio issues. Well, too many audios. The Dragon Beanie and Earth nice. decides to go with the right path, and so does Yellow Killer B. And we see here Fish a couple of different paths in these exclamation blocks, providing a little bit of a challenge early on. Oh, that's cool. You can make it actually block the. That makes sense. And from there, you can make your way through this level. But I'm surprised that both of them went to the right, right off the bat. And definitely a little bit, a little bit of a leap for Yellow Killer B. Oh, I like that. Yellow Killer B buzzing her way up towards the top. The Dragon Feeny trying to get a couple of those long jumps. And the Yellow Killer B into the tube early on. And nine, here we go. Our first look at the car. Dragon Fee's way behind. Get ready for some fun here. Well, I think I've seen this before. The bounce and going all the way up here. This is all about 
conserving your momentum. The trick in this segment of the level is you can't mess up because you don't get a chance to build speed a second time. Yellow Killer V driving underneath the thumb. Oh, oh. Just a couple of springs <laughs> has to make a U-turn and go back into track. Oh, okay. <laughs> Still trying to navigate those exclamation blocks and yellow killer B. Oh, a little collision coverage right there. Okay, no, they made it sound a lot worse if you didn't actually get in. It's fine. Dragon Feeny is miles, <laughs> miles behind. Dragon Feeny deciding to go to the left, but fish, yellow killer B. We've got Cat Mario right here. Oh, Cat Mario is finally making his appearance, and I like it. I like the Dragon Feeny tried on the right side and figured that she couldn't do it, so she went to the left side where she has the uh, mushroom trampoline, and maybe that would be an easier time for her to traverse through this. They're both having trouble now. A huge lead right now, and that needs to use the crawl feature, the wall climb feature there with the Meowther, or the uh, Cat Mario, doing a great job already here. We got Fairly simple so far. I w I'm curious to see the, the more crazy the stuff later. Goes a little bit slower than the blue. And nine, Yellow Killer B, she's not kidding around. You have to make sure that you handle these moving blocks and those springs can throw players off quite a bit. When we talked to them prior to this, they said the one obstacle they don't like are springs. It was a universal answer that they don't like. And you see that Yellow Killer B right now is trying to use wall jumps and stay ahead of that platform. But you gotta be careful as you're making the jump. I think she's starting to figure oh, out. Oh, cool. The use the snake blocks to blocks climb up because it goes upwards. I like it. Nice. Ah. Oh. Trying to think what I can use that for. More springs coming up here. Yellow Killer B trying to go on the treadmill. A couple of treadmills up in the air, though. I wonder if those coins should lead her there, bitch. Yeah, it feels like you want to follow the coins typically when you see these kind of levels and the arrows specifically. The on off switch is a new feature here in this Mario Maker 2, which actually turns the direction. Gosh, I feel bad for the commentators. They've got a lot of information to cover. One to cross the finish line, impressive right there. Dragon Feeny will have 30 seconds left to finish up the level. We see already she she's won't. alternating pink and blue bo blocks. You have to have a lot of really precise timing with this here, Nine. Yep, you saw right there. If you don't get the jump off at the right time, you will fall through. And that's the difference between this left and right side. This is more timing based, whereas that right side was about identifying which block you had to use. Okay. Oh, so one was a puzzle and one is right skill. There, hopping on top of those happy cool. clouds, getting inside the two. Yellow killer B, meanwhile, just sitting back. It's been stuck there for two minutes, have they? Yeah. An impressive job by our first two speedrunners handling that. And as we said, Bish, it's all about learning with the obstacles and adapting. And we saw that especially with Yellow Killer B as Cat Mario on that green moving platform. It seemed like she finally found her rhythm after a couple of tries. Right, right. Yeah, it really is all about using the climb, I think, with Cat Mario. Because you can you can go just a little bit higher and then from there jump to the next area and then do your wall jumps and whatnot. But I think it was very interesting that uh, Dragon Feeny was stuck in that one area between the two. Uh, it was very interesting. You're right. Gone. I love I that part. That was my favorite bit. Back to the mushroom trampoline a little bit earlier. Some players are just better at certain uh, aspects of the game. And nine, those exclamation she wasn't too good with either. Very tricky, especially when you're trying to wall jump, because some of those blocks you have to hit, others, they're not going to really help you out too much. And again, sometimes finding out which of the blocks you need to hit is almost a luck-based thing, and not all of those blocks are created equal. And really, I think that the most important part is identifying which of the blocks are nice, so if you do fall, you can make it back up without losing too much time. That's all, uh, well too, it's all just like they really the obvious drivel. Nice. They've clearly just got to make space. Right, right. I think that they just had to analyze their own footage and be like, yeah. did you see what happened? We'll explain it because we have to while well, we rearrange the contestants. I'd be curious to see how the Smash tournament goes because they've already done that a couple times, haven't they? Or at least once. So maybe they'll be more versed on how to do it on the talkings. Whereas like this is their first, so you got to hope that they already, you know, they can be a little bit rough on the edges. Round two, and this is where a little gamemanship comes in here, Nine, because you have to ask yourself, do I pick the strongest person to help me out in the second round, meaning I have a stronger opponent in the finals, or do I maybe pick somebody that struggled a little bit and maybe make my path in the finals that much easier? Well, I've heard that some competitors might be uh, maybe not trying 100% here in the early rounds just to make sure that they can throw people off here. So I think the games have already started, but you laid it out <laughs> perfectly there. 
Are you assuming that you can get through that second round with a lesser teammate, or do you want to get there and let the championship round decide itself? Get right, the medium player. Problem here. solved. The completionist here as they get set for the same level we just saw. They haven't seen it yet. They were blindfolded and had the noise canceling headphones on. They're excited. <laughs> They're ready to roll. The crowd is hyped up. Here we go. Let's take another look at this first course in Super Mario Maker 2 as part of our invitational. Let's get the countdown rolling here in just one moment. Whoever goes left wins. And off we go. Both players hitting start at the same time because they exercise good sportsmanship. <laughs> That's what we like to see. And we saw earlier, there's a big... Yeah, the music's more on beat. Still a bit weird. Block, this, but, oh, well, I guess it's because it's going on at the same time that it feels loud. The level already, Vish. It's all about the speed here, rather. Right, right. He wants to make sure he hits all the little blocks as soon as he can. But he gets a little power up if we, uh, the other players kind of... Ah, oh, they both go right. It's natural to go right, I guess. And again, both players going for the right side. And also, right here, nine, that point, interesting how, like, okay, just interesting how it lines up. Ooh, never mind. Oh, completionist. Nice. Oh, I actually got involved in that one then. There was a bonk sound effect on that. Precise jumps needed during this part. If you want to avoid an accident, those springs already trying to deter the completionist. And you take a look on the side, on the left hand side. Oh, other guys doing all right. Nice. They're both on the go karts. Are they really going to have stuff to say this time? After in between? Tricked up by it, and they end up jumping a little bit and having to do that entire course again. Abdallah moving on to the Cat Mario portion. Meanwhile, the completionist, well, he's just trying to lock some miles. We'll just put it that way. Oh, Cat Mario 9, you have to understand different physics can jump a little bit higher. It is, and already go. Oh, I just realized I'm reading it the wrong way around. Going over to the green completionist side is screwed. Uh, Yikes. does move a little bit quicker here, so it's a little bit easier if you want to get the speed, but sometimes that means you'll miss it too. Thinks they're going to try it right here. And that's a good point. The rhythm that comes with being on the left hand side a little bit more natural because those blocks move faster. But Vish Abdallah struggling just a little bit with the block portion, giving the completionist. Oh man, jump, but the momentum like the is not going. Is going for a joint right, right there we go. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It feels like Abdallah is just trying to remember how to play Cat Mario because he's, he's doing the glide when he wants to do the, the wall climb and whatnot. And Abdallah and hasn't worked out the climbing things. Every so often is really not going to be helpful in clearing a course like this that's very, very tight in terms of wall jumps. And that's a good point, Nine. We were talking to Abdallah prior to this competition. He said the physics for Cat Mario, very tricky. He pointed that out and early on already having to deal with it. Meanwhile, the completionist in the Cat Mario stage has a chance to catch Does the bell here. tree so always right have Cat Mario? The completionist will be really about even with them once they get to that checkpoint here. And I think Abdallah is starting to figure it out there. Instead of standing on top, that very slow green platform instead of maybe using it uh, right no no he hasn't worked that out he's found another way that creativity paying off right slow and steady that creativity of not working out the puzzle correctly is paying off to really think out what movements he wanted to do and uh, do the climb right before his jump so oh man if he fails just on this bit he's okay you got to follow those coins and you got to follow those arrows abdallah at the end just have to climb oh also they totally just said that players are faking how bad they are. Completionist literally went for the coins at the start and is clearly messing up with all of this. Uh, that's some. If that that seems like some acting to me. He's faking it. He's totally faking it. Seconds left, but you talk about he's, the different physics he's faking that you get it. used to, and already you're implementing traps and hazards from 2D side scrollers. You've got Super Mario 3D World and Cat Mario trying to handle Why is there so many sounds? There's also the menu 
Oh, we're hearing the sound effect yes, from the other guy's right gameplay, that's why. Do see that time tick away. It really was not understanding the cat Mario physics. They kind of threw him off there. there was a he never thought of the other door. <laughs> instead of looking for a more traditional wall jump, I think maybe a little more familiarity and that would have gone quick. It's surprising how high Cat Mario can jump a lot of times you don't have to use that glide, especially that He's totally faking it. No, yeah, the Cat Mario definitely is uh, a little bit difficult because in the portions like that, you're trying to just go and do the wall jump as soon as possible, but actually doing the climb just a little bit so you can time your jump and get a little bit more height is very crucial for that particular portion of the level. So Abdallah wins the head-to-head -head matchup against the completionist. We do want to clean up one thing in that prior race with Yellow Killer B and the Dragon Feeny. The graphics were on the incorrect side of the screen, so the Dragon Feeny actually winning that first round. And we'll see how her time stacks up against Abdallah. I believe oh. she has the fastest time, so she'll get a chance to choose her teammate in the first <laughs> round. But Oops. early on, Nine, we saw that on a given level, you can go left or right, and sometimes choosing the right path that plays to your strengths is all the difference in the world. Well, it's all about the strengths, and we saw trying to shift back over to the left side after a little bit of struggles on the right side there. That's where those split second decisions come in, because we've seen how fast these players can get through a level that they've never seen before. It really isn't that much room to mess up. And you saw the cart Mario. <laughs> They're coming in with new chairs. Very difficult. Acting like we won't see them. It's literally in the background. <laughs> yeah, no, the Cooper car is a, it's kind of difficult in a, when you're not sure what's going to show up next, right? Because you have to keep your momentum. You have to keep your. I just realized, I was like, oh man, this is going to be so short. But I'm like, nope, there's two more competitions after this. I'm fine. So keeping all of that in mind is actually quite difficult. The stream is not on offline. Lunar Eclipse, are you seeing the stream offline or are you seeing me in the Nintendo one? Because both are fine, according to me. Ah. Yellow Killer B should be lower down because they got less progress. Yellow Killer B. So interesting choice right there, but you saw Yellow Killer B wasn't too far behind the Dragon Feeny and. Now they get set for the co-op course, and this is where communication comes in. It's so important Ooh. that cooperative play as well, too, Nine. <laughs> well, player two is always important whenever you're going through a game like this. And the two winners, really supposedly, huh? Okay. I think becomes the shot caller in these situations. Some of these puzzles are going to really rely on somebody saying, all right, let's look at what we've got here. We're going to time this in one, two, three, something along those lines. Because we saw a little mess up can send you down far, and I have no doubt that this level is going to be the same way. And I'm really curious who the little brother is between the Abdallah and Completionist who's going to get I feel like I need to make notes, so like Snake Blocks as a, as a Cat Mario thing. The cart seemed pretty normal. Another Springs turning them around. This game that we saw earlier in the first um, the on off switch and how that might the big old tree, the giant bell tree, course. being the only yeah, thing that gives uh, you Cat Mario that makes you go up. With the timing of things, you know, in, in a two player mode, if you have on off switches, one person might have to turn on the switch, the other person would have to adapt to what that changes in the course map. So I think that could be uh, very tricky and very uh, interesting to see in a, in a game like this. But as Nine said, I think a lot of it's going to be coming down to timing and how well you communicate okay. with, with your ally. So I think maybe uh, part of the reason why Dragon Queen chose uh, Yellow Killer B is perhaps you know they've been hanging out a lot throughout this weekend, so maybe <laughs> that's no tactic. It's all friendship. Might help them out at this next level. Synergy, nice business. Work, I'm right? rooting for the completionist because he's the only one I know. And nine is you get set for co-op mode, and what we saw in this first course is it's almost that's actually gonna be interesting. Yeah, how people actually design co-op stuff. The only idea I've had is like two people on different pathways helping each other, like Portal. I'll have to. That watch through some portal co-op and see how that's done, yourself, maybe. While your partner kicks back for level designs. Well, you do have two people, Pressing so buttons to make it go up and down. Now figure it out twice to open the pathway. Something like that. So the communication is going to be just hmm. as important as what's going on. That's what it's going to be. Someone's going to be along the bottom path hitting the on and off switch. And that will open and shut the paths to make them go forwards. That's totally what it is. Players struggling as well, too. You have to be very familiar with these power-ups. And it looks like... Our teams are you think you can hide items in the bell tree? Sounds cool. I hope it's not only the cat bell, but it could be. <laughs> An official referee's here. And the completionist. Let's get ready for the countdown here, folks. Three, Do they have their own people two, pressing the A button for them? And let's hit that start button here. As we okay. Said, it's co -op mode, nice. Mario, Luigi, a little Super Mario World the new Luigi yeah. sprite. The competitors when we were talking to them said they are very familiar with this. So if okay. going to be a mode that they will know what to do, this is going to be the time. Simple enough. Early jump on, bouncing to get up. An obstacle here, trying to get to the top shelf. There's an on switch just staring you in the face. Dragon Feeny. Yeah, there you go. Separate paths. But now they've got to advance Luigi on the bottom. They're starting to slowly figure it out. 
hitting those on off switches. Hit each, hit each one twice. That's it. That's you just gotta hit each one twice. And the other person is just waiting. And in this particular moment, this is Ah, cool. Mega Man style. The switch on, and then the blue block will appear, and he has to jump on it. He has to do that two or three Nice! Wow! At basically the same time, both teams speak at the same time. Now you see a swinging crane floating at the top. They're trying to jump off of each other's heads to grab it, use those physics to advance. Oh, Dragon Feeny and Yellow Killer B moving forward, but there is a P block right there. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that switch here, Nine. The best prize that you could ever get at the end of a crane game pair. Dragon Feeny and Yellow Killer B move. They both get in at the same time. I cannot believe how close this is already. And now we see the switches again. Nice. It's going to be very important that they identify this because they are both moving at incredible speed. And you see, they're going to want that P bit. Oh, well. Maybe they ahead. don't want that P. The Dragon Feeny and Yellow Killer B. Don't forget, whatever team wins advances to the oh, final. Oh, cool. They against each other. Wow, they worked, worked that out immediately. That power block, I'm watching the boys. Video. Mario trying to jump up with that spring advances. Luigi on your right hand side, just a few seconds behind your fish. This is a really tough nice. race. They're just neck and neck right now. They're really figuring out all the things they need to do and like throwing the power block up there to get the spring. And now. Ah, oh, they got to catch the power block and put it into the. Ah. Oh, oh, smart. Past the gravy and past the power block. Oh. Vine comes down and Dragon Feeny, Yellow Killer B. They advance. Abdallah, the completionist. Oh, kicking it too high. It is exhausted having to grab a new power block. Here comes another on off section here, though, Nine. And this is going to require a lot of communication, it looks like. This one is a little bit tricky. The last time that we saw this switch, it was a little bit more obvious what you need. Ah, you got to both jump at the same time. Both jump off the platform at the same time. Abdallah and the completionist now equal with the Dragon Indian Yellow Killer B and Bish. This is what we talked about. Seeing a puzzle in front of you and figuring oh, out. Oh, boy, has got a head. Right, right. I, I think just even like scoring a level or just like going through and seeing what options you do have could really help you out in a juncture like this. You see Abdallah and the completionist on that left hand side trying to jump onto the red block. Oh, nice. What do you do here, Nine? This looks precarious. Well, they gotta figure it out quick. One, two, jump! Oh, that's so smart. You gotta start all over again. And it comes to the execution we talked about, Bish. You can have the right idea, but at the end of the day, your thumbs have to be in sync with your brain. Yeah, I mean, in a speedrun like this, you usually get like one one try at most in terms of learning that kind of oh, idea here. So, so cool. Again, because you have to start all the way from the beginning. Will he get the timing down this time? You can see them biding their time. Oh, oh they it. Too early. Shuts the gate on him, said, no, you can't come in for dinner. Oh, no. <laughs> Abdallah and the completion is going back to the beginning. Meanwhile, Dragon nice. Nice. But nine, this is an important point. The girls are miles behind. Well, they could get it. Give yourself as many chances as possible. Nah. God, I'm enjoying this. This is the kind of thing I would do. Constant blocks. They gotta, they gotta reset. Oh, I'm enjoying this. The girls cannot get the timing though. They're gonna give themselves another chance on the left here. Trying to time things out. It looks like they might have figured this out. Oh and Abdallah the completionist taking the carpool through the tube. Is that gonna be enough as you take Oh, that's not even how they had to do the last block bit. It's a trap and also a new feature. They immediately go and grab each other one time. Oh, the air ball is just short. Abdallah and the completionist trying to close out this court and advance. Simple. Nice. See, he was faking it. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> Judge had to write, yeah, the boys won. What a surprise. Oh, did they make it to the shell? I want to see the others keep playing for another 30 seconds. Come on, man. Because I've always... Okay, cool. They finally stopped it. It seemed like the difference in this course was how quick he's totally gonna sneak in for the win now. You remember a mini game like that co op concept in Mario Party 4? Which one? Switching blocks? Because there was. There's. Uh, dungeon duos where you're going through the pathway and you have to, like, make it spin. 
Which I totally love to recreate. There's ones with random pipes, and you've got to find the right one. At the end of that one. Or they're blowing up the balloons. Up to say goodbye to two of our competitors mm. crowd let's give a big round of applause to dragon Genie and yellow killer b excellent work <laughs> considering this is the first time they saw this one of them got right screwed over being acting like they lost when actually they won month, and then they lost anyway to and it'll be three objective -based they made the wrong decision one final course as well too and this is where things get fun because now you've got different ways to finish courses here Round one, the Dragon Feeny had the fastest time. She chose Yellow Killer B. However, Abdallah's Abdallah doing best. It's a bit of an upset in the second round. They'll pair off against each other in those finals. And, and as we said, Yellow Killer B got the worst of it. <laughs> now, it's going to involve probably more puzzle solving. Right, and this is a new feature that we have here. The ability puzzle to clear conditions and then... Ah, uh, yes, the last one's clear conditions, I think. That's at the end of the level. And there's different things that you can do. You can perhaps maybe collect a certain amount of coins, hit a P switch possibly. But they got mi yeah, mini objectives, I think. And then that gives them rules. Extra seconds. Something like that. I should have paid attention to the rules for the last 20 seconds. The last 20 minutes. Right, right. I think taking your time with courses like this really will pay off because there's going to be a little precarious craps as you go along, right? So, and oh, well. Just like blast through them. You have to like escort something. You might have to have an item along with you. You might have to collect all the coins, as you mentioned. So being... Being very wary of what's coming up ahead while taking while going as fast as you can is going to be really the, the key to portion here. Well, let's get set for our first course in the finals, the first of three mini courses that are objective based. So keep an eye out for what that objective is. It'll appear at the bottom of your screen here shortly. What do they not know? Abdallah versus the completion. They must know it. Course one of the finals. Let's get this countdown started here, crowd. They must know. Oh, the quality has gone down. Excuse they me. Were really chubby in the previous game, but now, now the gloves are off. Now they got to play against oh, each other. So, oh, look yeah. at him. I see a yeah. firm crowd oh. from the completionist. He's ready oh. to go. Three, <laughs> two, one. And let's roll here. Both players hitting that play button at the same time. Finals, Finals one. Reach the goal after hitting all yeah, one uh, piece, which is. Coming up eventually, and it's going to be reaching the goal after hitting all. In this case, Okay. Well, let's see what we have here. You go through the pipe, and there's a mushroom, and up, just like airplane seats for me, too big to get through them. Oh, yes. wrong idea. Completionist. We have in uh, Super Mario Maker 2, and it looks like there's twisters here as well, and we also have the little sandstorm feature, which is going to push you. Ah, oh, cool. It has more of an effect, huh? You, if you, were a big Mario. Abdallah trying to you gotta get the wind over. Come on, guys. can't make it through. That pipe, as long as you've got those twisters... Oh, does the, the P-switch turn off the... the around with the twister on the right-hand side. Meanwhile, completionist... Oh, knocks the twister off right there. And seems like both players still trying to kind of figure out how this course works here. Now. Right, and you call... The oh, the sandstorm doesn't, doesn't affect it. It just affects the direction they go. Both of them have gone through the door. They've gone back through the pipe. And it looks like... Ow. So what made it turn around? Oh, oh I guess being off the platform. The to the end, almost there. Gonna have to get it to drop just one more. You'll notice that twister doesn't move to any empty block. It'll return back, but the twister drops down for the completionist. Looks like our crowd is starting to. How do you make it go down on the corner then? Now it just comes down to that execution piece we talked about, Nish. Right. Yeah. I think both players are kind of figuring out, uh, figured out the. Oh, you get it on the blue switch first, of course. Obviously, it goes through them when you drop it. Yeah. All the way down, and that's gonna move the P block all the way there, and he is going. All the way, two blocks to the right. He's carrying it like a watermelon at this point. Oh, he hits the piece with the completion. First one through the pipe. Abdallah still trying to hit Simple it. puzzle. Oh, he gets the mushroom at the end, and the completionist wins the first course, giving him a three second head start. And the cool. Already but also, it's kind of anticlimactic. You know, it just moves a piece, which a little bit to the side. Talk about a margin for error here. They both actually did the same thing. They took the piece, switch up to the block on the top right. The only difference is that the completionist did not let the block go. We saw Abdallah do that. And once it's up there, you can't grab it again. It's floating in the air, you're floating in the air, and we didn't see it there, but he actually had to reset the level anyway. And it goes back to the mechanics of not only Mario Dish, but the different traps and hazards you're going to see, understanding how those twisters work and how I thought it was the sandstorm making it go to the right at first. I was like, how do you yeah, reverse the sandstorm? Did the off and off switch switch around the sandstorm? No. All the way up there and Cause I was like, oh, it does have more on effect, but no, not really. <laughs> Dem some potato graphics. My apologies. It's live. What can I do? You know. Really impressive work by both of them to figure it out. So let's go ahead and get set for our second course here between Abdallah and the completionist. The completionist taking the, the completionist is totally playing the game here. You see, he's just completely clicked. 
let's get this countdown started. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to see what the name was, but it just said download course. All right, we've or got downloaded course. course here, and Finals dash two. A hundred coins. Or the goal after grabbing all one hundred coins. You do have to reach the coins. In fact, a hundred of them. And you see right there, huh? that flag is not yet there. Cool. Let's the see what we've got. And also, what genre are we working with here so they're familiar with the controls? Yeah, this is... Uh, Super Mario World 3D, so we're gonna be able to see. Th this isn't 3D World. This is Wii U. So we're gonna have the. Uh, <laughs> the completionist on your right hand side using that wall jump and those swinging cranes. Abdallah Ooh. Right now gets propeller Mario. And oh wow, Abdallah's gotten everything correct. <laughs> and you see those vines might help here. Nine already. Abdallah blowing through this course. That's 90 coins right there. Needs to find 10 more. And as you look up to the top of your huh. screen, another new feature: 10 coins in one. This is all just one big advert for all the new things you can do, isn't it? Watch out, the completion is not far behind, but that's all 100. Abdallah now just has to descend to the bottom and all about grabbing that bag and going here at this point here, Vish. Yeah, working with the physics on this level, he, he traversed this so quickly because it, it was tight timings to do those little wall jumps and make sure... Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So much for gamemanship wow. and good friendship right here. They were just friends in the previous game. <laughs> Oh, they're really heating up here at the Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational Tournament. One of them sounds like a completionist. Do they turn around or have they got a giant screen of the whole event in front of them? Oh, I guess it's their screens down below, isn't it? Okay. I gotta say, these levels are so creative. I'm really enjoying them. Third objective based course here. Nine, go ahead and break it down for us. Right, the goal while well, riding Yoshi. Well, riding Yoshi. I know there's some Yoshi fans Don't lose him. Come on, who doesn't love him? Right at the beginning, you get to jump on him, but it looks like there is a world of pain waiting for them. A lot of sauce, and that's not something Yoshi likes. Completionist is used to this with Kite. No, no, he's not that completely used to it, apparently. Abdallah knows what he's doing, too. Avoiding the fire, but a twister sends him straight into the spike. And Abdallah losing a life right now. Oh, but the completionist able to move forward. Jumping underneath the saws and see some dripping water. Come on, completionist. Avoids the icicle falling down, but then that pink bumper knocking them off and you got to be careful here Fish. yeah but that being said i feel like the completion just like really went through that stage quite fast he was able to duck under the saws really well carrying the momentum cool nice and then he also, uh, there's a lot going on but i can't quite consume it all on the second part and we're gonna see seesaws here you gotta have to make sure gotta get the other new thing right portion and jump according completion has finished that so fast under a minute the completion is not rubbing it in, it's all business. You see the collar, you see the suit jacket right there. You'll take a three seconds. Oh, I to I totally taunt right there. How about that? Dancing around the hazards throughout that entire level nine. <laughs> and they just took the controllers right off him. By the completionist. We didn't even get to talk about the mechanics of that level there. I was gonna say, well, you know, if you bounce off Yoshi, he can run around and you can jump back on him. The completionist said, no, I'll keep my dino the entire time. Let's just run through this, no problem whatsoever. Prehistoric. <laughs> Preservation by the completionist right there as we move on to our final course and as we said a three second head start for the completionist and so it seems like these players are getting more comfortable. These I want more of these. I want more creative versions. I want to see an a or even a fan base tournament with more crazy levels, you know? Obviously this is one big level of all, one big uh, advert for all the new things. What else have they added? They have already shown us a bit of spike blocks. What are all the main the new new things? Games, though, they were like pretty neck and neck, and some oh, of them are speeding through it like we saw. They're gonna show us uh, probably yeah another nighttime, another nighttime theme. Then we've got sandstorms. Uh, they're gonna show us an upside down level. That might be too much for the final. Is it gonna be a lava level or a poison level? The lava's gonna be floppy down underwater levels that you can move. That's totally it, right? And I want them to use that sound clip and things. Oh no, it's a castle. Oh, completion is hitting the start uh -oh. button first. Obviously, you get that three-second head start. Oh, right there by it was six seconds. Honoring that, and of course, there's going to be lava here, nine. Of yeah, there you go. This was the one that we hadn't seen yet. We're taking it back all the way to the classic. There and neither. Oh, so far, a little stumble there. The change makes no difference. I wonder who we're going to see at the end of this. 
The completion is able to stay alive and dance around the icicle, trying to get some momentum, waits for that lava to fall. We get to the next section here. Of cool. Oh, Spider man, I'm moving my head along with it. Put him, put him through the platform. You gotta make him just fall right into the lava. Oh, cool. HD's come back. Oh, cool. Spike bar. I think that commentator was planning that one. Completion is not running along the things. He doesn't know. What are you doing, Abdallah? <laughs> cool. I'm liking it, though. It's simple as well, though. There's a lot of aesthetic desires, like with the fire. What is he always jumping? He's jumping for like an, an update. Oh, he's, he's accidentally pressing it too long, I guess. Some exchange. I feel like this is a trap that they should have like laid out a little better. Is that hard? That's not hard. Okay, he's got a checkpoint. Wow, I didn't think this would be tricky. That's that's way too hard. Uh, so you got to be further back. Never mind. Don't go forwards. Okay. You can do it around. Yes, completionists. They can turn off the blocks to kill the boom boom, so I guess it means they have to wait. Don't mess it up. That's fine. Nice. This is a horrible mountain climb, I must say. He knows how to do it, he just hasn't got the functionality for it yet. That's a boring puzzle. Oh. He knows. You numpties. There we go. Cool. Nice little house. Oh my god, there's more. Checkpoint reached by Abdallah. You see some more rising lava. A lot of Goombas trying to crowd the club. Oh, there he is. There's Bowser. 
Bowser, but it looks like Bowser has updated his home security <laughs> system. A couple more obstacles. With a few boom, boom a few Goombas. And this really is the puzzle here. Can they figure out the quickest and most efficient way? You see some spikes on top here. Can you kill him with spikes? Over there. You look, Adala is taking his time right now and jumps a little too Ooh. high. Oh. Oh. Jump as high as you could on the crane. Not so much in this portion. Have to watch your head, but you see the on-off switch will block the Goombas from coming out of the pipes. You have to navigate the huge fire breath coming in from Bowser. And this is where it gets tricky here because you saw those three icicles and you always know three is the magic number here. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool that the icicles kill them then. Okay, the third one done. And then he thought it was going to be three as well. That's why you fell on top of him. You thought it was going to take three. The completionist though, getting ready to go. What? You need, where did the other one come from then? Up, up top? Bowser's been working out. Huh. Bad luck, completionist is swooping in. Completionist, he's on the swinging crane. He's gonna take a stab at Bowser. Oh. It takes three, right? No. Oh, little did you know. Oh man, but these icicles are very interesting. You gotta jump when you're on the icicles and make the other three come down. Interesting. Cool. You trick the people now, but online now, people will never fall for that again. Oh. Oh. Oh, they come back. Of course they do. Nine is not good either. Oh my god. Not a fun fight then. <laughs> Mr. Finger Guns. What a crazy last level there. The way you take out Bowser was so creative. Super Mario Maker. I think out of everything in that level <laughs> there, Nine, the thing that surprised people the most, the 14 hits to knock out Bowser. We're all used to three, but 14 icicles to KO Bowser. And it, I think it's so important to recognize how tricky the method that Abdala was using was, because every time he jumped out, there was a chance... Oh, you never know where to go when you've lost, do you? You just sort of step around. So do you not get to hear any words? I know the guy's there with a microphone. Okay, cool. So I actually played these these courses myself in Japan, but I was unable to clear any of them. So, <laughs> so yeah, even even for the you know the staff of this game, these these difficult courses are really really tricky for us to play. They weren't that difficult. Well, 
Eh. No, but you you were truly amazing. It was it was a super oh. play that you put on on oh, the play for us. <laughs> <laughs> あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
host, and we have two of the leaders of the Pearl and Marina fan club, Nine and Milano. Welcome to the big stage here. And Nine, as we get set for this action, we've had a chance to see this wonderful Splatoon community grow throughout the years, but there's some folks that are going to get their first splash of ink as they watch... The Australians are definitely going to win. I know someone who lives and breathes Splatoon. Okay. Is the perfect word. This is a fast-paced multiplayer objective-based shooter. But unlike some other games, there's a mechanic called ink or turf. Putting that on the ground is going to allow you to move around. It's going to allow you to hide all sorts of interesting things. But we'll go into more detail as the games go. Well, mm. as always, Teaching the games again through the tournaments makes sense. Nilly, so let's take a look at the tournament rules for the Splatoon 2 World Championships 2019. Up first, we have our ink pools. <laughs> Did there. Turf War, teams will play two matches sure, in a you, you didn't make that, but yeah, sure. After play, the teams will be ranked by their win-loss record. Then we move on to elimination mode, our semi-finals. Best of five, you see those ranked modes. My god, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of matches, isn't it? I mean, they're kind of quick. This one I'm less invested in. It's the one I'm least invested in, honestly. So we'll make, we'll make something work. Um, I need like a... Oh, do I have my pen and paper anywhere? I do. Talk about high kind level. of. Yes. These teams are the personification of that. What kind of strategy will we see from these high level teams? Well, Jordan, these teams are going to have to play at the top of their game. They're going to have to communicate effectively with each other. Did you They're see that? To play My pen. As a team like they've never Ex played before. Exploded. Really need to I put a push down on this and it just went flying out. The best of the best in the world. And you mentioned that Matt Okay, that just didn't. Oh, the other half's gone. That's why. Life, but also and I started writing. Just went boom. What are some of these teams going to be communicating to? There you are. My goodness. Have you snapped? What's going on here? Too quickly for one person to see everything. And also, as we mentioned, you can hide in this game. So it's all the more important that everyone is in. You see somebody coming from the left? Maybe call out someone's coming from the left. If you're the back line, yeah, play, play a tournament. Play a competitive, competitive game. Communications, how you win games. So I know whenever wins in Overwatch. Take an early look at a couple of our teams that will be competing in this year's Splatoon 2 World Championships 2019. I can't make this thing connect. Oh well. Lime soda. Ooh, that worked. Watch this. Pen is not a functional pen. I really need it. Alright, let me try one more time without <laughs> purposefully doing that. There you have it, two of our first teams, Lime Soda representing Australia, New Zealand, and the GG boys from Japan. Let's start with Lime Soda and Milana. They had quite the journey, Lime Soda from Australia, New Zealand, to get here to these championships. Oh, Lime Soda are Ameri uh, Australian. Gotcha. They're doing cringy poses. It's probably not them. It's probably the director making them do it. You know. Everyone saw what that was. They are trying to beat what GG Boys was last year. The most important thing for them is, I think, identifying what weapons they want to play because I know they've been in a bit of a flux recently, and you have to identify what's best. And nine, we were talking about that as we were partaking in some physical fitness at the gym this morning, trying to stay healthy. About how this is probably one of the most talented championship Oops. setups we've ever seen. We've My poor desk. These four teams are stacked. Ah, oh, that's are stacked. permanent. If you watched last year's Splatoon 2 World Championship, I'll go out on a limb and say that every single one of these teams is better than what was representing them. I was using this in the end. Again, because the game changes so quickly, if you stay stagnant, you are going to get left behind. This should be a lot of fun from the word go. And Milana, we're starting with Turf War. So let's break down the strategy of Turf War. Obviously, it says you've got to eat Ooh, as much Ooh, that too. Possible, Sweet. But it's Oh, and it didn't go through so the other paper. The game isn't really played the same throughout that whole um, three-minute segment. You have to really focus on getting that middle ground. You wanna, you wanna take 
take control of the map. You want to turf as much as you can, and you want to make sure you don't die. It sounds kind of obvious, but you, you don't want to be left in a 3v4 situation. And you mentioned getting splatted. It seems like for the first half of Turf War, there is an emphasis on splats. At least that's what we heard when talking to the GG boys. Definitely. By taking out some of the opponents, you are able to make those pushes into their enemy base. You're able to control that turf for a longer period of time. And nine, as we say, when the popcorn finally popping in the final 30 seconds of turf war, what's the most You know, maybe that's what's wrong. Whenever I play Splatoon, I never think about the opponent. I'm just too, there too busy trying to ink turf that I don't think, oh, I should find someone, destroy them, and then take the stuff around. I never thought of the technicalities of it. I never bought Splatoon 2. If I get rich, I will buy Splatoon 2. But I have Splatoon 1. I barely touched the game. Should play that first before I play two. I don't know. Do. Right. So the plan is, I need to be, and they're all they're just setting up. So what I've tried to do, let's see if I've got this one. Bring that up, and hopefully you can see. Can you see that? That says BRB. Is that un is that unclear? I can't tell how clear that is. Let me look on editor mode. Yes, you can kind of see that. Or what if I? Can I like... Just so that I... Because I don't want to make the whole thing disappear. Oh, hold on. I've already got this set up, don't I? No, no I don't. Oh right, never mind. That doesn't, that doesn't stick like that. That almost makes sense. Sorry about the mic noises. All right, I'm gonna put this up on the chair. I won't be gone long. I mean, I've taken way too long just setting this up. There we go. I'll be back in a sec, but you can still listen to the thing. Hope you enjoy. I just need to pee, and it's Splatoon, so I can we can wait, you know. <laughs> or somebody right there as well too hopefully they can scyther their way to the goal here and you take a look at the coin toss that we had earlier on and it looks like lime soda won the coin toss they're going to choose manta maria for our first stage and a level you're obviously very familiar with here nine manta maria what are some things you have to keep in mind on this map well, i think it's actually my favorite map in the game and i think it's because a lot of different weapons can succeed there the reason that i think they chose this is you see right there Yoshiko is a backline specialist. She is going to be moving around the top mid area of the map where there's grading. She's going to be able to influence a lot there with the long range weapons and the GG boys don't have a dedicated backliner. I'm thinking that's why they went there. And that's a very good point. You look at all the different weapons and obviously what's interesting about the so-called meta right now with Splatoon 2 Milan is that so many weapons are viable in play right now. Definitely. We, ha we have some sort of um, people think a certain way about certain weapons, but I find that in competitive play, it's been more varied than ever before because of how the meta is shaped. And we had that conversation with GG Boys here, Nine, about how they feel ever since the updates from last year. You mentioned that different GG Boys this time around in 2019, they feel long range weapons have much more of a higher success rate this time around, and so they've had to change their composition a little bit. They have, and it's one of the reasons earlier that I said that they're going to need to find the composition that works for them, because as we said, they don't have a true dedicated backliner like some of these other teams. Last year we saw two frontliners, sometimes three frontliners. That's not going to cut it this time. You know that they know what's best. They just have to identify it quickly. And what's great about Lime Soda, Milana, is that we've been talking with them all week long, and this is a team that's very confident, a very young team, and they know that... Have I missed much? That they got here, as you mentioned, the dramatic Yoink. qualifier. They've got nothing to lose but here. But actually, they feel like they can hang with got, oh my that gosh, this is high. There we go. Um, while I have got pen and paper, I might start writing out some Super Mario Maker 2 plans. Anything can happen. We'll also introduce the other two very strong squads here in just a little bit. We're about 90 seconds Did I miss much? Getting things rolling here. 90 seconds away? Okay, that's cool. For GG boys. You know my heart's with Yamamichi here, not. <laughs> Tell us about some of the other players. Certainly. One is going to be keeping my eye on is Tetsuna. Well, I don't need the big bulky pen, but it's fun with the big bulky pen. In the world, and I know that seems like a big claim to make, but he's one of the few that can make it. A flex player is someone who can switch between a number of different weapons on the fly. You haven't studied yet? The teams were just roasting each other. Oh, wow, okay. And then Taiji going to be on the front lines, opening things up as well. 
And that's a good point you bring up, the flex player, because GG boys, they don't have that traditional backliner, that safety valve that's going to make sure that you can always have somebody to super jump to. They like to play with two midliners that play that flex I position. That very aggressive. However, if you can splat them, you've got a hole in their defense. I think that's what they're going to have to look at, and I think that's where Yoshiko can kind of influence the map. The one thing that can really shut down a midliner is a backliner. Longer reigns, shut them down from there, get yourself a 4v3 and move in from there. And you were talking about the advantage and the exponential advantage. We're going to use that term push. So what is this? Australians versus Japan. Am I right on that? East versus West. Well, so East we versus East and then later West versus West. Teams moving up as one unit into uh, the enemy spawn or into the enemy side of the map. And by doing that, they can have more turf, more more area to maneuver, and it keeps the enemies back and kind of intimidated. <laughs> so we're working on a controller issue right now, but what's great here is I can sit up here and talk Splatoon 2 with you oh, all yeah. day long. <laughs> Nine. Here's what's great about Turf War. It is the foundation of every single ranked mode we're going to see. There are other objectives later on. This is long. Also, why is it all darkness? I have like no lighting on me. I'm gonna turn on the lights. You're gonna get tired of hearing us say turf control, and I apologize in advance for that. But it is the fundamental building block that won't make a major difference, but I'd only just noticed. So what can you do? That's better. Oh no, I've got some beams on my webcam. I thought I said it was starting in 90 seconds. And it all starts with the fundamentals uh, 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 uh. That, you that you get from this mode right here. Milana, we continue to talk about specials. And when you lurk at, look at Turf War, what are some on. specials that come to mind for you as far as things that'll really help out teams? Just set up my own webcam, sorry. As well too, when we see, see that one? Of a match really turn. As for Turf War, I think we might see some specials no, that... No, it's not that. It's not that. It's not that. So think maybe like bubbles. Um, I might there expect to see some missiles on the side of GG Boys. Uh, by using missiles, it can really move the backliner on the opponent's side away and... Are they not ready? They're all in the computer. They're all at their computers. We've been obviously on the suffering end of those before. have to scatter like mice. There we go. I'm not, I'm not all jittery now. very powerful tool, especially in Turf War, if you're really looking to dislodge the opponent. Nice. And it's remarkable how quickly Tense Missiles have come up and really come up for the longest time. They were the special that you didn't want. You would choose to not play a weapon if it had that as its special. But basically because of buffs to certain weapons, people have gotten better with it. And they've started to see the utility very quick way to, as Milana put it, pressure the back line of the enemy team and push them back. You hope there's a disconnect in the middle of the match. What to get the real authentic experience. <laughs> About 30 seconds away as we get set for our opening match in the ink pools of the Splatoon 2 World Championship 2019. We've got our defending champions, the GG boys, trying to take on the up and coming Lime Soda from Australia, New Zealand. Let's see if they can shake things up here as we get set. Crowd's been fantastic, by the way. They waited until last night yes. to get in here, Nine. <laughs> when, we were, wow. when we were handing out donuts earlier, the first five people in line I saw were all Splatoon fans. They had signs, they had everything, and their waiting is about to be rewarded as we get started. All right, it's also interesting. I don't know any of this. Like, there's a boat level? I didn't know. I guess I should watch them to understand a little better how to play. I won't. I'll probably just get lost in all the screens. Is this going to be the setup? I mean, I guess that makes sense. So they have one guy, Yellows has one guy sticking out. Oh, what a cinematic view. Okay. Can you like watch this and manually choose who you're watching? This is already going a little fast for me, my god. A little bit. My goodness. Yeah, so the GG boys did not miss a beat. Once they took those uh, members of Lime Soda out, they were all over it. <laughs> Will with the slaughter up top, hops into the baller, not going to get anybody there. Oh, that's a cool a skill. I don't know any of Spatoon 2, apparently. That's what we talk about, Knight. If Lime Soda is going to create upset, they've got to find those situations. They did, and it was great. They're getting a little bit too aggressive. That's sometimes the punishment that happens. But look at this, a never-ending stream of pressure as Taiji continues to push up from what we call the snipe area. 
Will actually got the punishment there as well, so it looks like it's an even position here. I think BD Boys needs to hold Makes me want to play Splatoon a little bit, but I know I am just absolutely abysmal. Nice, I forgot even who I was going for. I want I want Lime Soda to win. I want green. Is that are they green? Are they yellow? Looks yellow. But it should be green if it's lime. Nice. Applying some pressure as we get to the final minute here, Milana. And they had good defense, apparently, or really something. Completely changes. I guess it's good to, like, go as a gang now. You start it with a separating, you know, three go forwards, one stands back. So you cover your own turf. That, for, that fourth person then comes back and gangs up with people, and it's like four-ish fights, or two, you know, pe fighting in pairs, maybe. No one's got rollers. Rollers are for, for scrubs, apparently. Ooh. They had the perfect angle and view on everything, didn't they? That's pretty yellow. It's not! Different score than I thought it was going to be. Not only did the GG boys held on, they did it by around 200 points. I thought that that double splat there at the end by Yoshiko was going to do it. And Milano, we saw Yoshiko and Lime Soda really put up quite the effort at the end, but it seemed like the GG boys really dominated the final 30 seconds, and that's what turned the tide. Um, I actually think it turned the tide just a little bit before because they were really. Um, I think Lime Soda got caught up a little bit with the aggression that GG Boys had, and they kind of pushed a little bit too far, um, like I think Nine was saying during the match. So I think that's kind of what turned the tide, even before those 30 seconds. I like, I, I feel like I need like proper training to get into Splatoon properly. Like I need to, I need to, well for a start I guess I need a team to bounce off of, but like, I'll need to like re, I'll have to play a game online and I'll have to have someone analyze it and be like, you're, 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 you're no. I don't know. Maybe I should just finish one of the stories and then maybe I'll actually be better at the game. What do I know? Oh, sweet. Okay, okay. this is, this is going to be quick. You know what? I think maybe I can settle into this. Because it's all new to me. Yeah, you're the, you're the Europe guys. Nice, nice flag. I like it. Team Europe. Alliance Rogue. Shouldn't it be Rogue Alliance? Yeah, this is pretty cringy, isn't it? Five of them? Is one of them the manager? Is it not our first look at Alliance Rogue representing Team Europe and then representing Team North America? FT Win and Milana. Let's start with Alliance Rogue. Four v four, isn't it? They got a back. They got a. They got a runner. A stand-in. Composition or the different roles that they have. 
how, what are you really looking for when you see them take on the map? When they get momentum, there's nothing that can stop them. They have such incredible individual skill. When they are working together and getting that ball rolling, the push that we talked about earlier, you can't stop it. They are just too good individually. As we said, there will be a coin flip to see which team will decide what map they start Is on. Is it possible to raise volume on the stream? I can do. The Not there. The G boys claim the first title. These How's that? Fools will figure out our seating one through four, and then we'll see the teams one versus. That should be desktop audio louder now. We get set for the semifinals. They're kind of quiet. Going back to the strategy there you are. and the specials, we saw a lot of inkjet actually by the GG boys in that first matchup. What do you like about that special? Thanks for letting me know. Actually, kind of fallen out of grace in the competitive world. It's it's pretty easy to snipe out of the air, but I do think that it requires a lot of skill, a lot of mechanical practice to be able to utilize it well. So I think it's a good special for GG boys, just because they're so hardworking. <laughs> <laughs> and nine Alliance Rogue representing Team Europe, they win the coin toss. They decide to go with Black Belly Skate Park. So as you strap on your knee pads and helmet, what do you like about that map? Well, they have two players that are some of the best frontliners in the world. That's going to be Urza and Kiver. They are both amazing at what they do. And Black Billy Skate Park, a very up close and personal map where the aggressor really has a lot of angles to play around. This is the part where everyone goes on their phones. What about the middle of this map? There's an area that we're very familiar with that seems like trying to contain it. To contain it Actually, I'll go on Twitter, important. so I'm still on it brand, is shall I? Center area is where you want to put your backliner or your Because, like, I'm you not. Can see the I don't, I don't there, know so Splatoon exactly enough for any of this, you know? Nintendo has sent out so many tweets. And going back to some of the fundamentals of Turf War here, I mean, it makes sense. They're like, oh, don't miss the tournament. The tournament round one has just passed. So you're in an Splatoon is going on. That final Definitely. So you want to put yourself news? in an Twitter telling us any news? Spot as much as you can. Although that doesn't really EA play you right now. Victory, That's what it is. It's a good. It's a better chance. <laughs> All right, we're <laughs> getting rolling sense. here. We've got FT Win taking on Alliance Rogue here in our Ink Pools matchup. Turf War on Black Belly Skate Park will take a look. There's a new the Sims 4 trailer. trailer. I was hoping for Sims 5, but it's not happening. Here shortly, you go ahead and you see Alliance Ooh. Rogue in the pink. Sims 4's been out for five F years. We don't have burglars or firefighters. Tut tut. Okay. Might be the most important person in this um, when EU guys, that's who I'm voting for. Pink. Mm. Interesting. One out front and three up back. Are they just that good against people, or is it a scouting role? Maybe it's scouting, maybe. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's... Ready to go for Alliance Rogue here, Milana. Yeah, so we see uh, on both sides, we actually see a Neo splash matic which has a Bomb Rush special. Very good for covering turf for turf war. And right now, the action continues to wage back and forth. 2.15 left, 4.3 on the map. Advantage Alliance Rogue. Kibber right okay. now trying to take the higher ground through the fine job of covering. Pinka getting there. Already. Kibber getting to the top of that hill. Yeah, and you saw the only person actually left up wow. was Ice, who had to retreat all the way back. And right now, I think that both sides are trying to feel one another out. You've seen they've traded some splats here. They've thrown some specials there. They both know that that last minute is where they need to be perfect. So much can happen in Turf War, and things can change so quickly. Shaq, meanwhile... And not being very aggressive, America. As far as what he's going to go ahead and ink. You see a complete, complete newbie experiences Splatoon 2 right tournament. Ice is one of... And what's going on at least what weapon is that just gigantic sniper in the distance like laser sniper is that the stingray or Plenty of time left here, Milana. What mm -hmm. do you want to see from FT win if they want to turn the tide? Now you stick into pairs. We need to coordinate those specials. Where's the fourth? So, like oh, we we'll find about, out later. The specials coming out together will definitely make the, that push back much more bearable. One minute left. 4 3 on the field. FT win. They're trying to go ahead and mount a push here. Alliance Rogue has been very strong. Kimber trying to avoid some trouble, but no. We've got 4-2 here, 9. I think that Ice's Stingray actually took two people out, and if you wondered why they were sitting back so far, it's because they wanted to have two specials up going into that last minute. As we <laughs> see some Wolford Ballers being played here, and like, I love the fact that Kyo has already moved up to try to help it. They have them pushed back, but they can't go down with 30 seconds left. Baller on baller crime right there. Kiver trying to back up. We've got 25 seconds left. To My mind cannot FG consume this all. Definitely. You want to you see those 
that push. Um, they may be waiting until the very last second so that the Anemi team can't cover their turf, but we'll see how this goes. Oh. It looks like it's turning the other, the other tide. The tide is turning! MT win <laughs> with a bit of an advantage. Can they hold on? Big time splat by 2D at the bottom of your screen. Gray trying to get behind the defenses. Let's see if Gray was able to do enough work right there, Nine, and slip behind the defenses of FT Win. You see some blocks of pink. Ooh. That might be it. Let's see what our friendly feline say. Oh, and that is FT Win. What a surprise. With the first victory. <laughs> and once again, a team that looked like they were down early on, able to turn things around and get the victory. Wow. Well, it's no like only the ending matters. And again, them but I don't know. I would just get completely... Left, I always just get killed in the last minute, and I'm very bad at that. Why will you not stay up, Floss? Come on. Well. Thank you. When you get two people coming out at a time, it means they can't coordinate, and that means you have a much easier time slowing them down. And that's such a good point. Let's build on that, Milana, because a lot of times when you are in a disadvantaged state and you're getting sent back to spawn, you can't just send squids and octolings out there as fast as you can. You've got to be coordinated. Definitely. Like we said, exponentiated pushes. Or expen we want to we wanna push Wait, together as a team. Apex Legends is something different? FT no, no, it's a normal thing. Okay, never mind. It's a team that I was catching up on some EA stuff. Um, we saw in the Star Wars. Oh, well, well, it's the countdown, though, it yes. says. NA Inkling Open fun. We already know what it all is. <laughs> it's not fun. Star <laughs> Wars. Eh. Really Apex. Uh, cool, Battlefield. Uh, EA Sports. Them, FIFA. Uh, that that Madden. Uh, Sims 4. Uh, As we get set for our next not my thing. Here, get out of here. Soda, they won the coin toss, and they're gonna go I'm still disappointed in the Sims 4. I've bought it now for free, so I haven't bought it at all. Just because it's free. It was free. That everyone will know about this map is you have the fans that raise two of the platforms that allows you to not only defend your side but go up and attack the other side too so i think in choosing that they're saying all right we can trade with the best of them here we're going to give ourselves the opportunity to push way deep into the opponent's side they did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the gg boy so you have to feel that that confidence that they brought into this one here milana isn't wavered even though they dropped their first game and like we said before it's that it's that momentum that they might take so even though they lost, they, they had that confidence building up throughout that match, and that might be carried over into the next match. And what we're seeing here, once these again, people are too smart for me. Before, you got to try and stay alive in the final 30 seconds. I mean, we're seeing I have to do them in the same very obvious stuff, kind of like the Mario tournament. But really you know, are able to so what? This is best of five, or is this? I think right, so. Last 10 no. Sometimes feel a lot longer. Than <laughs> this is just the opening. A lot can change there, especially when you have the bomb rush special. We've seen teams bring that out. We didn't talk about it a lot, but you throw those out, the suction bomb rush especially, you can take an entire area of a map in just a few presses of the button. Yeah, it's very powerful, especially at the end, because by the time you get those bomb rushes out, the other team probably doesn't have enough time to recover and re-ink your turf, Milana. And definitely, and using those bomb rushes, you can hopefully get a pick, which gives you more turf from that. <laughs> Getting set for our third match here in the ink pools. We're about I would hope so. Away, and we mentioned Anchovy Games, Australia winning the coin toss here. And I'm going to start speeding up now because we've like seen all the teams. Here, Less this of the cringy poses, yeah? Championship core team. There isn't really anybody that's a clear, clear, clear cut favorite. Everybody has a chance to win this. Right, and I think all four of these teams at one point in their match have held the lead. There's just been small misplays here and there, but I think that that again shows you how well you can play and how good all of these teams are. And even though there are levels to Splatoon, when you get this far, you know what it means to win. You know exactly what you need to do in a right situation. It's just a matter of controlling your nerves and executing. And that's such a good point because we were talking to Australia, New Zealand, and they said they felt more pressure qualifying for the World Championships <laughs> than being here because they knew the opportunity to be on this stage, to be in this spotlight, was huge. They didn't want to miss out on it, but now that they're here, they know that they can just relax. They have nothing to lose. Definitely. Shall we start? I mean, we're all here to have a good time, right? And spots and squids, cephalopods. <laughs> <laughs> I like it right there. And as we said, they're getting ready to roll here in ink pools, anchovy games. And what about sub weapons, Nine? We haven't had much of a conversation regarding that. What's <sighs> the well, Someone had to post Pony even longer. The busy bomb is a very strong weapon. One this of the is the unfun, unfun part of the stream. Set. You shake that up a little bit, it'll explode three Like at least with Smash, I know what's going on a little more. Any time that you have what we would call a lethal bomb, a sub uh, suction bomb, a splat bomb, 
going to be great and you can let's move on the let's on go oh let's go ahead show me the battle here and get ready and it's show you games we've Sweet. got lime soda EU versus EU. On. go yellow green right now let's go yellow take a look at the that's pretty yellow here. another reason i can't well, play splash here i'm too cut blind for this have opted to bring a bucket both will and urza are going to be playing that slosher deco i didn't even get the I chance paid to attention to the weapons but i don't know any of them that thing has been buffed recently it will take a lot of area and the slosher deco one of the most common picks in the game and nine pointed out earlier milana those fans that raise the platform are going to play a pivotal part in this map. Definitely. It, it gives that easy entry into the enemy side of the map, um, but it also, you have to keep it up. You have to keep shooting at it in order to raise that platform. So potentially that could be um, an area of... This must mean fun area. to design. Like, designing all the Splatoon effects, the ink effects. <laughs> Ooh, Urza. Unable to get a splat. Soar gonna go ahead and hop in the baller as well, too. And early on, neither team getting that player advantage on the map here, Nine. Mm. Well, they've both been very cautious. And one of the reasons that it's so important to control those fans is because, as you can see, there aren't really other ways to attack the opponent. It's just gonna be a battle for the middle until one side pushes up. They've both been deliberate about getting there and nice and slow, but you see Alliance Pro starting to get up there. Kiver with the suction bomb rush right now. So are they talking the whole time they're doing this? Doing a fine job, Alana, of being that back what? And staying on the oh, higher elevation cool. The I was like, what's making um, that go? The thing about the ball point is that even though it is a backline weapon, you have a lot of mobility. So it can act as a frontline weapon. You can Interesting really position, but alright, I'll take it. I feel like I'm learning play. things on positioning even though I've never seen them before. A couple of burst bombs coming up here. Geo undeterred by that. Let's take a look at Gray with that mini splat link. Raising the platform, trying to stay higher. Nice Nice little use right there. Oh, here comes some Tenta missiles. Let's see him scatter here. Nine scatter is the right way to put it. Who's Geo's causing the job. Who's Not causing the shower? So far back that he gives up the fan. You see, moving right back up there. He knows that his job is to continue painting here and not allow that pivotal spot to be taken. Alliance Rogue has got a special ready to go. Sword just trying to determine oh, when okay. he's going to use that They're staying point. still. Left, That's not something I do. I'm always running forwards. We're going to get hot and heated here in a second. Will trying to bring a bucket. Got to be more defensive, I guess. There, That's the answer. At this point, baller ready to go, <laughs> and we've got baller on baller cry once again. Oh! But Urza able to be a little bit more patient. Nice one, Urza. That is the crack of the wall that you're looking for if you're a line throw. It is. They moved right up there. You see, they didn't waste any time. And all of the members of Australia are stuck back here. They're going to have to move around. You see, this bomb rush that Geo's using isn't going to be able to find that all-important middle of the map. They're having to use their specials just to get there. 3-2 mm. on the map and a special ready mm. to go for Lion's Rogue. They're looking to try and push this thing and claim a victory at this point. Uh -huh. Both teams looking for their first victory in Ink Cool. Like, I act like I'm learning something from this. I'm not. It's all probably just. Geo, trying to avoid a couple of shots from that explosive. Able to stay alive. Five seconds left. Through my eyes and out my ears. Lime soda. They are down, but let's see what the final count is. And this might go in the favor of Alliance Rogue. I think once again, Milana, they had the advantage in oh, that yeah. final minute of this match. I think that Lime Soda maybe played a little bit too aggressively in this map. They, um, I saw a few 3v1 situations that maybe wasn't what they had hoped uh, would be the outcome. So I think using that aggression, toning it back just a little bit. And I think at the very end, Alliance Rogue kind of pulled back a little bit. They pulled back to mid so that they knew they had that turf ready, readily covered and readily available for them. It's so true, Nine. It seemed like those platforms would be It's so true, Nine. You have no idea. This map. And then also, the timing what of the specials for the second the match in a row, we saw two ballers this. meet, and the one that deploys and when explodes is this blasts is the one that has the advantage. And when you have the middle of the map, uh, that means that you've painted up very well, and you typically half have an hour specials. No. It seems like every an hour and a half. That we saw, uh, we started at six. Oh, but things start at seven. So what, half an hour into this? Is this halfway? Surely not halfway. This is a... So Mario was one hour, taking us to eight o'clock. You know this will be two hours, taking us to and open your more, early more than eight o'clock, ten o'clock, when I usually right. finish, and then Smash will probably be another hour, for two hours. Team Europe, they were really Am I finishing at eleven or twelve? As as, hey, that's what I want to know. State, let's do special. <clears throat> they definitely held their specials. They didn't use them willy nilly. They didn't. If they didn't need it, they wouldn't use it. And that's such a good point. All right. So Here's the part where everyone goes on break. They dropped their second match in the English Alliance Rogue representing Europe. They're one and one. Now we'll see a matchup between our two teams that not are even, uh, opening Not up. even EA FG was there to entertain me on the side. North America and your defending champions, the GG boys from Japan. And 
Nine, I know you're really excited for this matchup. Well, I, th I think this is the one that everyone's been waiting for. I know it's Turf War, so it's not quite what everyone's looking to yet, but this is going to tell us a lot about the way these two teams stack up on an individual level, right? The coordination is still important. The game knowledge is still important. This should be a lot of fun to watch, and I believe we only have one map left that they can go to. Skipper Pavilion will be our next map here, and give Sims us some early thoughts about trending. this one. Well, this is a great midline map. There are Islands areas living. here that you can just set up shop, watch where the opponent I is I was hopeful from, Sims 5 would be this year. There. I was like, oh, maybe. I don't think that this is a backline mandatory map, nope. so we might see Ice opt to switch to Not another weapon, but I do feel this You think you're done watching Tiny Peng Peng? Just a little more. Fair That's enough. Good point, Milana, I can Nine understand. It's not a back line map. These games, I thought really I'd try and cover as much as I can. Definitely. We this see is my Dynamon least least interested part for me. Feel free to go. You can come back for Smash in if you're general, interested in Smash later. Otherwise, eh, they might reveal more Smash stuff <laughs> later. They might not. So as we get set for Skipper Pavilion, I thought I'd try and win in North America, consume it all anyway. Because if I don't Japan, stream it, I'm probably not going to watch it. You know. Here. Anything that you're seeing different develop between these two high-level teams. So I'll catch you another time, Tiny Peng Peng. I stream every day, and no, I don't. Every Saturday, 6 p.m. around this part, basically. Is that there were two so, uh, L3, hope to see you in the future. We're gonna call them, L3 nozzle nodes. As well. It's a weapon that has just recently, within the last couple of weeks, started to creep up into relevance. It's a weapon that paints a lot, and it does it very, very quickly. And both of the specials, the Baller and the Inkjet, were used to great effect earlier. So I'm interested to see if they opt to go with that, and what FT Win's response to that is. Because that's not a very conventional weapon. And we've that's also not a very conventional weapon. weapon. You're right. Weapon. You know, it's going to make yes, a big difference. They've anything, decided to go for such an unconventional weapon. Really it team. could change it the time of the tides. You'll you you never know what's going on. It's going to be a crazy. You never know what they're going to do. You don't get punished. The best thing that happens is you identify where the opponent is sitting. We like sharking within the community. Heavily invested, I am. You know, but identifying where the opponent is trying to hide can be very important, especially if you're getting desperate. Do you have something I should check on my phone? Oops. Continue the nautical puns right there. Nine, I know you love it. I'll keep serving them up to you all day long. My friend, oh, anyway, there's much. a look at the Splatoon Sterling Squid. You see the names emblazoned on that on the side. In 2017, Team North America deadbeat, scoring the big upset over Team Japan. But then last <gasps> year, the GG boys, the winners, they're Why hoping to so go ahead then? and just hit copy paste That's on the, that trophy for this I guess year. They, but they got to check. Gotta I mean, I guess they do need to check everything's right. But like FT Win, a team that has really done a great job of establishing themselves as one of the top teams in North America here, Milana. Any other notes about them as far as what you've seen from FT Win throughout the year? Um, I've seen them participate in online tournaments. I've seen them participate in locals. They are really just a force to be reckoned with. Here we go, Skipper Pavilion, Turf War, and our Ink Pools. Your defending champions, the GG Boys, taking on FT Win from North America. GG boys and the turquoise, you've got FT win in the purple and early on. Who do I want? I want Japan to win this time. Inkable at times here, nine, and so you have to be careful about the path you take to try to get to the other enemy's territory. You do, and I think huh. that the GG boys know exactly that. Look at Etna switching over to the Tent Umbrella. A year ago, you would have been lapped off the stage for using that. Right now, it is a force and one of the scariest weapons to go up against. You see it right there, but I love the fact, you know, we said this would be a long range map. The GG boys opted to again bring what we would call a double oh, back. Cool map. How much? You can see. Yamamichi able to pick up the splat on Kyo. That's big time right here. Etna using that tent umbrella to clear some space. Shaq right now sharking around as we see. And here comes that suction bomb launcher as well, too, from the upper echelon. And you look at having the higher. What is that weapon? Map, Milana, that's big, too, because it seems like you have the I guess that's their special, the isn't it? Ground. Um, definitely. By having higher ground, you have more visibility. You can see everything that's happening. Um, and it's just. It's better for you in every situation. <laughs> IG moving huh. along with that L3, as you said here, Nine doing a great job of covering some turf, but it's also so good at picking up splats. And that's what the GG boy said. They're looking for splats early on in this matchup. Well, and you look at what they've done with Etna there. Etna has been at the top part of the map this entire game, and for good reason. It takes two or three people to take him out. They've rotated their backliners at the bottom, and Yamamichi has used the same Stingray from the same spot three times now. Yamamichi getting it done for the GG boys. have got a 4-3 advantage, but that's negated all of a sudden. Ice with a nice splat right there to even things up. You see the Stingray charge for Ice, trying to apply a little bit of pressure, help out his teammate over there. Kyo was in a two-on-one, but very nicely done by Ice to provide that support. Nine. And that support is exactly what they're going to need. Because uh -huh. again, to go back to the Tent Umbrella, that is a weapon that you can't really beat in a one-on-one, -on -one, provided that the opponent knows what they're doing. 109 left. You see 2D and the baller taking on the Tent Umbrella, trying to ruin the camping trip right there, but no! Mm -hmm. 2D getting splatted from behind. Taiji 
trying to avoid the pressure right now. Trying to get out of the two on one right now, using that baller, chases them back. And you also have to be very careful about how defensive you can be here too, Nine. You do, and we see the bubbles coming up right here, and immediately ice what jumps all the, the way out. Bubbles, so you know dude. Excuse get me. Anything out of that situation, but be careful. Your Shaq's actually in a great position to jump on this aggressive play. But just like Clockwork, the GG boys sense that there's danger. Rotate back. It's going to be a battle of specials as we get here into the last 30 seconds. Shaq trying to get behind enemy defenses. 2D using the baller. Nice job by Taiki to avoid. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, oh, huge support help on that splat. Nice Boys, one, Japan. GG boys. Final 30 seconds, Yamamichi once again with that stingray getting a big time splash. And down goes Kyo. That means that all of this turf is going to be completely free to ink, and there is a lot of it. You see Etna pushed up. Shaq and Ice are pushing Dynamon back, and Yamamichi needs to They're rotate. dominating Does in the last moment, right although that bottom part, position, maybe. And I think that splat's going to be the one that settles it. Yamamichi getting it done for the GG boys. A bit of a trade right there in the double splat at the end for good measure. Unbelievable work. You see the GG boys going to clearly mm -hmm. take this victory, and it looks like even though the competition has stepped up nine the gg boys have obviously elevated their game that was a battle that was won on these <laughs> does this count as camping you can see that the gg boys came in with an idea we're going to put etna up at the top we're going to distract as many people as we can with our double backline composition we will ward people off and if we need to support etna we have an infinite range stingray that's going to do that job the ink pools are all finished up here you take a look 2-0 japan they go ahead and take the overall top seed for the most part and then you've got a couple teams that go 1-1 but at this point, we'd like to welcome in the other member of our commentary crew. Put your hands together for Ashley Escada. Hi, Ashley, everybody. How are you doing? I'm great. What happened to Melanda? <laughs> well, Melissa? Last Ma year, so I'm, I'm ready. I've, I got one more Excuse left, me. and I can have a whole Splatoon team. <laughs> I was on my phone <laughs> before. It's set for rank mode here soon. For you, what's the biggest difference? You've obviously covered a couple of these championships before. When we make the transition from ink pools to rank mode. I mean, ranked mode is a whole different ball game, right? So in Turf War, there is one objective. Obviously, there's a single objective in all of these ranked modes, but there's so much more strategy that goes into each one of these modes that you're going to see all kinds of crazy loadouts. I think nine, like we've talked a lot about how things have changed quite a bit, even from PAX, when we were at PAX, like things have changed. And so it'll be really interesting to see what these teams roll out with. And obviously, Turf War is the foundation of a lot of different things, covering that turf, as we said before. But then you get to the rank mode, and you throw in another objective, and that's going to uh -huh. change these loadouts, as we said. It is. And I think the most important thing to note is <sighs> uh, none of the rank modes are decided when time hits zero in the same way that Turf War is. We say that only the last 30 seconds matter some because more it doesn't matter how well you don't go the too entire game. <laughs> In ranked modes, you get to keep the lead that you built, and it's up to the opponent to beat it. Let's take a look at some of these ranked modes here as we prepare for semi-final action at the Splatoon 2 World Championship 2019. Up next okay. is Tower Control, and it's one that many people love here. Let's start with the basics of Tower Control. Ashley, what are we looking to see here? Well, there's a tower in the middle of the map, and if you or any of your teammates get on it, it's going to move toward the enemy base. If you can get through the checkpoints, which is a very key part of the strategy here, uh, you can, in fact, knock out the other team. But they're not going to make it easy. <laughs> Let's take a look at the updated bracket after we just got done with our ink pools and see who will be facing off against each other in semi-final action. And you see the GG boys in first place. FT win in second, Alliance Rogue in third, and then Lime Soda in fourth. So GG boys will take on Lime Soda in the first semi-final, and then FT win facing off against Alliance Rogue in our best of five here. And so your eyeballs immediately go to FT win and Alliance Rogue. They had a very balanced turf war match, and you figure rank mode will be just the same here, Nine. Well, just think back to just one year ago, the last time that we saw the North American team and the European team, we saw fireworks there, one of the best sets of Splatoon I've ever seen. I expect much the same here as we keep going into this tournament. In Tower Control, Ashley did a great job of talking about the checkpoints, and on certain maps, some checkpoints are more important than others, Nine. What does that mean? Well, when we say that a checkpoint isn't that important, what we generally mean is it's very easy to reach it and very easy to get through it. It's not a big point of congestion or contesting. So if we, there's a spot where we say this is the key checkpoint to get through, generally that is the point of no return. And you know, some maps only have two checkpoints. That's right. And that is when things get really intense because you've got a scrap for, for that time in those checkpoints. You are, it's, it's, it's war. Well, it's, it's really important war. too when you get to a checkpoint to clear it. 
the last thing you want to do is sit there and park with the engine idle for eight seconds and then not clear the checkpoint, tower resets, and you've got to go through that same point again. You do. You have to get through every part of it. So even if you get to one single point left on a checkpoint, if you don't clear it and it goes back, you've got to get all ten of them again. As we get set for tower control here, we had a conversation once again with the GG boys, the defending champions. I'll be and honest, I was zoned out for a lot of that, even when I wasn't looking on the, the phone. Tower, we understand it's just words you got to wait for, you know? This is why that you should tower. cut to adverts. It'd be a little bit more interesting. To go for splats to protect our buddy. It'd be quite interesting so that, actually, if that they that made an official, like... Because they probably already have them, and they like esports the channel. Best slayers out there, and so you're gonna look Maybe. for all kinds of flanks. Well, pitch in and out. Boys. They are gonna be looking for Especially ways to take Nintendo out the one. back line and the mid line of their opponents, so that there is no way you're gonna see a stingray on the tower, and that's gonna be the easiest way to get an opponent off of there. All right, we are ready to go here. Tower control, semi-final action. Hey, semi-final. Only a maximum of 12 games here. left. Man, I know you love this one. I do, and this map is We're one of on the most the exciting places to play tower control. 16. On. You can see all right the way there. done. Three checkpoints, but they go by quick. That first checkpoint, nearly a stepping stone. Four. It's really that second checkpoint we're going to be looking at. First. Seven. Limezona in the green, and you've got the GG boys of Japan in the purple tower control early on, and a splat that makes it three-three on the. Field. Three one. EG boys with a complete wipe right here. Nine. He built that stingray in ten seconds. Outrageous! <laughs> Outrageous! A master builder right there. Dynamon on the tower. You hear the cheery music playing, and now it's all about protecting the tower. Who am I going for? Let's go for. We'll go for Australia in this. Let's go green. Finally, line. One of the easiest ways to clear a checkpoint is to, if you've wiped, especially an entire team, the best thing you can do is push forward as far as you can and keep them away from the tower so that you can drive that right it right into the. This finish. kind of game mode, I don't think I'd ever be good at. Who knows? Maybe I'll surprise myself. The way that they've rotated their aggression is insane. There's so much I'd like to say about this, but I don't think I'm going to get the chance to. Nope. Wow. Never mind. GG I should have wrote. Should have gone for the you Japanese. Wow. That's full on just one of the matches, isn't it? Might have had a controller issue in that one. We'll let you know what possibly oh. happens. Sometimes those things happen, but for the most part, you saw the GG boy strategy and how quickly they were able how to. How do you get a controller issue? Were they not using the same pressure. controllers? That was very, very smart because they knew. Okay, we will give up a little bit of presence in the mid to maybe trade for what could be a double splat. It did end up being that. That allowed Dynamon to get through that first checkpoint without any resistance whatsoever. But the key moment, I think, was the fact that as Taiji was in that inkjet moving up, Etna moved up to take that spot as well. We're going to talk about rotational pressure. That's exactly what that was. And Ashley, we saw the push from the GG boys. They weren't just camped out by the tower. They extended their offense out and really kept Lime Soda back towards their spawn, and that buys some precious seconds for the tower to move. It absolutely does, and I think the GG boys of all the teams here have obviously been together <laughs> the longest. Got a Splatoon necklace. They're the defending champions. <laughs> they, they have not swapped out a single player from last year. And that means that they have, I would argue, the most trust, right? So they trust that whoever's on that tower, they got it, right? And they can go forward, they can push, they can make those kind of gambles that really pay off and enable them to win so quickly. And you saw the GG boys get the victory there in tower control. And you know, you want to take a closer look at Team Japan and hear from them as far as what they enjoy about being here with a chance to defend their title. I am Yamamichi, Etona, Dynamo, Taiji. We are GG Boys. Splatoon 2, wow. Splatoon 2 is a game that all sorts of people are playing. Like my wife is playing it, and so are her friends. I think people from old to young. Last year I came to E3 as well, but I never thought I could go overseas because of a video game. Which team do you think will win the championship? Huh. Needless to say, the GG Boys are going to win it. I love the story about his wife got him introduced to Splatoon and all of a sudden loved doing this. So wives, once again, they make their husbands that much better, honestly. And you take a look at the GG boys and what they're trying to do is they defend. And this is a team nine that- How long does it take to set up the same match again, huh? Worked up. They know that Assuming they it's a rematch? Their ability level to be victorious. Is it a they've rematch? They've been here so many times. They've been on this stage what we, what, more than what's anybody going else. On now? But also, they've played at the highest level in Japan, specifically Japan widely regarded as the strongest Splatoon region, they get this level of competition every single week. So we do want to let you know there was a controller issue with okay. Lime Soda in that last match of Tower Control on the Reef. 
we're going to go ahead and redo that one. So you love the sportsmanship between these two teams right here. So it's now 0-0. It'll be the GG boys. Yeah, clap it up right there. Yeah. We're all friends. I hope they get it twice yeah. now. I'm I rooting for I Japan to, DC. to keep right. their title. Like, accidentally DC, I want to do over. <laughs> They'll get set to go ahead and take on tower control in the reef once again, but expand on the reef level a little bit more. Still here. gotta I wait though. Like it so well, the, the left side where we saw Taiji use that inkjet, I think, is the reason I like it the most. Because there's, there's a new so many FIFA news, but I can't even understand what it means. In front of the FIFA 20 is bringing back street games, it. but only for one-on-one -on -one play. Looking, and they're not gonna be able to use the oh, okay, as in like, okay. What was cool is we heard I got you now. Said we're going to go I don't know, you could do this game. back and street games before. Community, Ashley. Just a very or just warm, street games. Community for such a competitive game that it continues to Sounds like they kind of did it wrong anyway. Nice one, EA. Welcome to men. It is 100% true. I I have played a lot of shooters in my in my time and the old woman. <laughs> and uh, and but this community is so joyous. They are so much fun. They are so welcoming. Even the top level players are like, just come talk to us. We'll give you tips. We'll help you. We want you to beat us. Like that's that's how wonderful and strong the foundation of the Splatoon 2 community is. We'll get started here in a couple minutes as we continue to figure out all the Can we please? Issues. We want to make sure everybody's good and locked in and ready to go for these semifinals. So much at stake here. And, and nine, listen, you're the darling of the Splatoon community on the cover of the Splatoon <laughs> Tiger Beat magazine and all the True. cereal boxes. That's a reference. Speak Goodness. a little bit more about how it's grown so much over the last couple of years and how Splatoon 2 has made this game so accessible for so many people. Well, I think it ties into this has exact it? tournament, actually. I think when we had that very first E3 championships back in 2017, people saw what teams could become. They saw that you could get sponsored. They saw that you could be even better at this game. That pushed everybody up, and that made more people mm, interested yes. in the game. It's no secret Maybe. that I do love this community. It's done a lot for me. It's helped me reach heights that I never thought I could, but it all starts with love of the game. This game is so addicting. If you pick it up, you will not be able to put it down. It's so easy to love. That's the, that's the thing I like about it. It's like you're, you're in there, you meet Pearl and Marina, and you're just like, I love, I love these, I love these squids. I love them. <laughs> well, we had a chance to hear from the GG boys representing Team Japan. How about their oh, counterparts from them. Australia? Lime Soda representing Australia, New Zealand. What they got to say? Anything new? It sounds like they just said the very basic. Yoshiko. Shockwave. Trent. Geo. And we are Lime, Lime Soda. soda. <sighs> you don't drink that way. You drink like that. The fans watching. We love and cherish all the support Acting that you guys give us That's each and every right. single day. And it's really lovely waking up to see all the support you guys give us. It really does motivate us to do our best and put a smile on our face. I love the emotion from Lime Soda when you see that the fact that they qualified and We've been talking to them all week and how excited they are to be here, but they're not wide-eyed, Nine. The stage isn't too big for them. They feel like they can come <laughs> here and make some noise. Well, they're playing with health money. They know that if they just go out and execute it, they have the right weapons, right? Everything that they play is what we would consider to be meta. They're here to have fun and compete. It's the same game. The stage is just a little different. And also, they're the upset kings of this tournament. I mean, they came back from a, an 0-4 deficit to win 5-4 in their qualifier. So... Anything could happen. I, I'm excited to watch them play. I absolutely love that they are a really great representation of the, the meta and also just really good, cool people to hang out <laughs> with, like last couple days. You see Lime Soda right there bubbling up some conversation with themselves as they get set for Tower nice. Control. Maybe a different strategy. Oops. Let's go ahead and run this thing back, y'all. Tower Control on the reef. You've got the GG Boys of Japan in the purple, and then in that green, you've got Lime Soda and nine a little bit more come on japan like the same compositions come out again yeah and I, I think that that's part of the rule set as well to make sure that nobody can tactically dc as we would call it we're going to see the same strategy another 12 seconds but this time will gets a nice pick here so instead of going down immediately they know okay we can't do that again and they're actually on the upswing this time oh Four damn advantage momentarily on the map for lime soda that tower hasn't moved at all so lime soda showing that they can be quite the formidable foe early on here comes tai chi with an inkjet trying to apply some pressure Nobody yet climbing on that tower and Ashley we've also heard these teams say we're not gonna grab that tower until we have an advantage on the field. That's right. Sometimes you wanna wait to get on the tower. I know uh, whenever I play I get
get really excited. I want to jump right on there. But the real strategy here is knowing when to get off the tower and when to get back on the tower. So they're all going to wait until there is an advantage and the right person can get on that tower. Nice little trade right there as Yamamichi rides the tower. <laughs> the Japanese the don't think that. They're like, nope, off we go. On the map and a couple of specials ready to go for the GG boys. And you saw immediately they moved up and forced a double team on Will that caused that follow to be popped probably a little earlier than Will wanted to. And now we're going to get to see again this snowball. Does it go through walls? Very this well is really like shooting at walls. Oh, and just like the man predestined, speak it into life here, Nine. <laughs> Nine's for Damas over here. Wow. Soda. It's 4 4. That tower really just passed the first checkpoint, and that's not safe by any means on this map here, Nine. You also look 3 30 left, plenty of time here, Ashley. And Lime Soda doing a good job of bending and not breaking. They are doing a great job of neutralizing. Slayers. I mean, this is what they have to do. They have to make sure that they are taking out their opponents so that they don't get these specials because Yamamichi with that Stingray is very dangerous. Here comes Ezenup jumping into action here, Nine, and what are we seeing from the GG boys? We saw an incredible use of all three specials there. Dynamon kept himself on the tower with his baller. Then they used their Stingray. Once the counter Stingray came out, they had an inkjet ready to pressure that. That's why this push is still going as they approach that final check. Shock being very careful to stay in some green ink to drop the hammer on Yamamichi and the GG boys. However, GG boys have cleared a second checkpoint. They have a sizable 32 to 100 lead will. Trying to avoid some pressure, gets on the tower. And let's see if Lime Soda can get on the board here. 2.30 left, plenty of time, but they face yet another deficit, actually down 4-3 on the map. It'll be really interesting to see what Will does next. He takes out Atona uh, and ends up going one for one. It's a trade. I, oh, this is going to be really close. I think in the way of... I don't know what's going to happen here. GG boys getting closer and closer to the final checkpoint. Yamamichi, Stingray, you're going to hear it all afternoon long. A little Stingray on Stingray action. Nobody getting stunned right there. Dynamon using that baller, however, getting pushed off the tower. That's the issue with the baller on the tower sometimes, Nine. It is, but you saw that Taiji was up there holding that position. And to talk about those counter Stingrays that just happened, if you are on defense and you lose that, that oftentimes swings the game for you. Yoshiko needs to hit another snipe here. I couldn't speak it into existence this time. Final checkpoint cleared. It looks like the GG boys are going to have no problem getting this victory, and they do. Took a little bit more nice. effort than last time, though. When you see that Australia, New Zealand, they were able to be somewhat equal in the beginning, but it was just that constant onslaught by the GG boys. Too overwhelming. You know, that, that combo of the baller and then you got Taiji with the inkjet is just so hard to overcome on tower control. It's a really good strategy. Clearly it works. And, <laughs> I, and they wrote it all the way in. And nine, we're going to say, as we said earlier, Yamamichi and the Stingray. You're going to see that a lot. Why is that Stingray such a powerful and valuable special for the GG boys? Well, let's check the stats. It has infinite range. It goes through walls, and you can see where the Does opponent is. Walls. So all three of those things are very wow, important. Wow, really? So I think it's just slow to shoot. Low and aim. Modes that we'll be playing today, Tower Control and Rainmaker, have a centralized objective. You can see where it is at all times. And on the checkpoints there, you saw they were opting to save their stingrays for that time because nobody can run. If they get off the tower, the checkpoint resets. We just got done with tower control. You saw the strategy there. We'll get set for our next ranked mode match between the GG boys of Japan and Lime Soda of Team Australia, New Zealand. And it seems like for Team Australia, New Zealand, Lime Soda, they have to just make sure that they can continue to get somewhat of a push against the GG boys. We never saw that in that last match, Ashley. Yeah, sometimes when any team plays against the GG boys, it's really tough to get a hold of how aggressive they can be. Uh, especially when they really get out in What's front everyone else doing to spare some time in between objective. these? And I think that's going to be is the there much hardest going thing for them to do, but it is the thing they must Am do I the only if, one they that have, finds if they boring. want a chance of coming back. Let's go like at this point, I'm just hanging around for Smash. These two teams I don't know if they'll reveal something new. We just got they probably won't. Control, the but it's worth giving a look. Victory, this best of five. I've got Up time. Next, good old Clam Blitz here, Nine. And a lot of fun strategy <laughs> with this one. You hear an emotional Because I feel like if I, if I drop out here, the theater and I don't watch Smash, what's gonna they're going to reveal something to Smash. I don't think they will. First of all, wipe that smirk but if they do, you know? There's a lot that goes into Clam Blitz. It is the newest mode, and it's probably the most difficult to really get a grasp on. This is probably the mode where just controlling the map is the most important part of it. And we've seen a lot of developments in this mode since the last time that we were on this stage. I'll say if there's two things you have to do, 
everybody needs to pitch in to collecting clams. You collect 10 of them, it puts together what we call a football oh, I'm appreciating the speed clam. on this you one, throw it into the basket, and we'll see if these teams can show you how it's played. Clam blitz and I don't want a ball so here. You same, got oh, yes, yeah, same two, I guess, the again. And then lime soda in the green. Is this going to happen twice? The, boys nine. They said the five out of five. Oh, about dear. Clam blitz, but rather dominating the economy, having the majority of the clams on the map so your team can't form those power clams. And let's see if they... Follow that strategy early on, and what do you like about Arrow? I don't know this game. Well, it's a very Stingray dominant map. Some people like it for that reason, some people don't. But that's why, again, the GG boys continue to bring two backliners here. They know that they can control the way the map is going, and that great right there where you see the Tentabrella set up shop is going to be the point of contention. What? I love the fact that Yoshiko is here, and this Taiji baller actually is going to get them through. They need to grab that claim again, though. Taiji dancing around the ink, two big time splash. Looking to form the completion. He got Gets three. The power clam into the basket, and now it's time for the GG boys to start filling the basket. But as you said, just a great individual effort by Tai Chi Nine. It was, and more than anything, this score might and you not can be collect a score, but it's going to mean that they control the middle. There is a mechanic. You collect so many, you get a basketball or a ball to, to put in the thing. Or, uh, anybody on your team is standing, so it's going to mean that they can continue their pressure. I think that Australia has snuffed it out, though. Great defense by them. Australia able to survive right there. Only 26 points scored by the GG boys. You see that. 13 point penalty and actually you can also see the number of clams each team has by that small number underneath their four icons and right now neither team with a lot of clams how do you see you they, so oh. trying to get back into this one well they're starting to climb up uh, a little by little but what's going to need to happen is they're going to have to put down oh, some 14 and 4 it, okay i was like hundreds a lot of orange. that's and a lot of clams they're also going to have to stay away from yamamichi stingray <laughs> Yamamichi once again with that Stingray applying pressure from the back line. Taiji using that baller. You lose the clams when you deploy that baller as well too. Middle of the map controlled right now by the GG boys. They've got another power clamp. How about that? Hiding in the bubbles, Nine. There were bubbles everywhere there. That was a very tense moment and Etna able to sniff through there. Do they know Etna's still there? They do. For a second there, I was a little worried that they were looking the wrong way. So again, you're seeing small scores and that's gonna mean that the penalty is still there. Now that power claim that we talked about scored you 20 points. This is actually still a very close game. Lime Soda not out of it at all. As you said, one power clamp followed by some smaller ones into the basket. They are right back in this thing. They've got a 4-3 advantage on the field, but let's see if they can finally get a push this match. It seems like they can't get past that second. I don't quite get my head here. around it all. What's with all the mini the numbers under each individual? Right there that you can see black Does they have 20 clams? And then it's like, there's a plus 10 underneath one of the remaining. You have to find a different way. You Is that play. a penalty? Tai because G they did something? Individual effort we're seeing here, Nine, getting some critical splats deep into Lime Soda territory. Pushing them all the way back and continuing to But then when they use their own space. splat, so it takes off their so own the clams? Spot, there's something about positioning yourself in the right spot. I am way too newbie to at this. People get angry at me when I make Pokemon does. videos, Just but this is the next level. Don't know what's going on. point advantage. However, you see the penalty. Lime Soda not out of it by a long shot. That's enough. Gonna go ahead and super jump back for defensive purposes. Dynamon trying to apply some pressure with that explosher. 143 left, and right now the match has gotten to a bit of a stalemate here, Nine. It has, and the way that GG Boys is playing right now means that Lime Soda actually can't build up any clams. You see they're shuffling a few around back here. They know that there's not much time, so they're trying to make the score that they do get here a big one. But because GG Boys continues to hold the map, there's not even a chance for them to build it. Oh, the barrier is broken, though. The GG Boys have a chance to add to their lead. They're adding clams by the bushel at this point. All right. To you you see throw the timer in? in the middle. That gives them that much more time to fill the basket up. Can they get one more clamp in there? Doesn't look like they. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. And here comes more pressure, riding the shield of those bubbles, trying to pop the hopes of Lime Soda. One minute left. 91 point advantage for the GG boys. Now is when it gets difficult for Lime Soda to have a comeback here. Nine and. That is the game. GG How did they boys break a barrier? The basket. They take a two-zero lead, and once again, it was the specials and the push by the GG boys. But how about that strategy we saw there, Ashley? hiding in the bubbles for some protection to get closer to the basket. It's a great strategy. It's a great way because it's going to take a lot of ink to get those bubbles to shrink down enough to be able to get your opponent. So, yeah, that's a great strategy. Hide in there as long as you can. Stay in the bubbles and then get right under that basket. And as soon as the bubbles either go away or pop, you're good to go. 
First two victories go to the GG boys. One more, and they will have the sweep of the semifinals and find themselves in the finals. Let's take a look at the next upcoming. You're so confused as to what's happening right now. We've got Shows your lack of knowledge of the game, right? A lot of competitive well, they said this was uh, accessible. So Anyone could understand what's going on. Here, it's a little I'm lost. For. However, there are some things that change here. There are. I think the easiest way to describe it is something of a king of the hill, right? There is going to be a zone, sometimes two smaller zones. Yeah, that we you know have to zones. Take. That is going to bring down your timer. You want your timer to either be lower than the opponent's when the time runs out, or run all the way to zero. And competitive players love it because of how consistent it tends to be. And you mentioned consistency, Ashley. We've had the conversation before. A lot of these modes, you can mount a comeback. Splat zones, very difficult to come back. What are some things you need to keep in mind once you secure the zone if you want to make sure you protect your victory? Securing the zone is one thing, making sure you're not getting So is this all going to be... I mean, it's going to be faster thing. coming so into the rounds, I guess. Really, really doing a good and job actually, yeah, of it's almost done pushing this forward, half. Okay. making sure, again, you're keeping your Maybe opponent I can from either that central this. objective in the splat zone or both splat zones. Hoping really that the GG boys win again. Two. Let's go shopping at Mako Mart here. Don't yeah, forget right. to grab some so like, what, One more hour left of this. And this is only I one flat like zone on this map I here, swear. Nine. So a lot of the action is going to be very concentrated. It is. And taking a look right now, immediately, you see a double L3 nozzle nose. That's going to mean two ballers and a third one being added in by Dynamon there. If all three of those go in the zone, they're going to take it in the blink of an eye. You see Lime Soda in the orange and the GG Boys of Japan in the purple. GG Boys already securing the zone. And one thing they talked about, Nine, is that they're not going to push too far once they get the zone. They want to make sure that they aren't too aggressive and give themselves the opportunity to be snuffed from behind, flanked from behind to lose the zone. And they're especially going to try to build their baller. You see that they already have a Stingray at the ready that's going to immediately target Yoshiko, who is willing to trade a one-for-one one there. I like that because it allowed them to take the zone and apply a penalty. Huge recovery right there by Lime Soda. You see the 36-second penalty for the GG boys, and that'll buy some precious seconds for Lime Soda. 4-3 on the map, and actually a chance for Lime Soda to finally make a push with the advantage. That was a huge take-back, because once you can apply that penalty, it becomes, a, you, there's a little less pressure. And I think that that's really helpful for them in this moment. You see the splat. We've got a spill on Isle Splat Zone right there. Nine and Etsuna and Taiji. You mentioned the double L3 composition. They're going to go and try and put a lot of pressure on my double L3 and you can see composition. The ready, so what is that? Any trouble at all doing that. Etsuna going to run in. Pop the baller. There's another one that they can use. Trapped in the corner. Etsuna goes for three. Why not? The fourth one sitting up at spawn. And this is getting ugly. Etsuna putting on an absolute clinic. Finally able to get slowed down. But it might be too little too late. GG boys just a few seconds away from claiming this third victory. And that'll do it. GG boys with a clean sweep in the semifinals and last year's defending champions having no issue whatsoever through those three ranked modes and what we saw early Ashley they controlled the zone and they were able to apply some pressure and spawn yeah absolutely and not only were they able to do that they were able to do that with completely cool heads as if <laughs> as if this is just something that they do in their sleep which pretty much it is <laughs> well let's go ahead and give a round of applause to lime soda they put up some great battles we certainly appreciate them coming all the way here from australia new zealand to give us a show i'm sure we will see many of them later what a great opportunity great experience for them but nine it's very tough when you're going against the defending champions. It is. They're the champions for the reason. As they give a little fist pump right there, they know that their goal is still a little ways away. Let's take a look at the updated bracket here as we have our first ticket to the finals punched here by the GG boys. They get the 3-0 sweep in semifinals, mm -hmm. so they will take on the winner Makes of sense. FT Win and Alliance Rogue. And as you said earlier, Nine, this matchup between North America and Europe that we're about to see in the semifinal this is one that you really want to keep an eye on because these are two teams that are really dominant in their regions and have really taken the crown in their respective countries and now they have a chance for an opportunity to knock off the champions here soon. And more than that, they are very familiar with each other. Earlier, Milana was talking about Crack and Paradise and Team Olive. The two and now we got a nice long focus. wait, don't we? Those two Dot teams, along with FT Win, have been more, battling huh? at the top of the European North American leagues for ages right now. They know the tricks that each other are going to do. And obviously, you're well aware with each player, with each, each team for the most part. But actually, the stage is different. You know, it's different when you're playing online versus live on the stage in front of this crowd, in front of this audience for this platoon Sterling Squid up for grabs. It's different just casting on the internet <laughs> by yourself. So be, yeah, being in front of this amazing crowd, they're hyped, they're ready to go. Like they, they are super excited. I am ready to go. Teams face off. Obviously, FT Win, it's a Leave. hometown team. We've got North America here, but. 
the end of the day, anything can happen. Like Nine said, these teams have faced off against each other many, many times just playing Splatoon. So it'll be interesting to see how all of them react. And Nine, we were talking earlier in the week, and you said FT win. When they are at their best, it is hard to find anybody better than them. It's just a matter of will they be consistent enough in this tournament to be so able to match the was that just two teams, or were they actually going flippy flop? The GG boys. It is, and they have been hiding their scrims, scrimmages, scrims for short. They have been hiding the results of those because they don't want anyone knowing what tricks they are. I was trying to talk a little bit with them. These are my <laughs> friends. They're like, sorry, no, we can't tell you anything. Yeah, no friends, no friends None. during no this friends. week here. No friends. Well, we mentioned FT win representing North America. Let's take a closer look at the four that comprise this squad. I am Shaq, Tutti, Kyo, Ice, Quavo. And we are V2 Win. My single piece of advice would be to understand that getting the most amount of splats in the game does not necessarily mean that you played perfectly or you did everything properly. There's always more to learn. Just because you get the most amount of splats doesn't mean that you played the game right. Damn it! I was always thinking, oh, maybe I'm not that bad. I sometimes get the best FT win school. Right They're getting a chance to know nope. them a little bit better. And Nine, they were talking about some strategy for some folks that are maybe just new to Splatoon 2. And he said sometimes it's not all about the splats. Right. There's so many things that go into playing a good game. And sometimes just being a Brella on the tower and not leaving the tower can be the difference between getting a win or a loss. Sometimes it's holding the position. Okay, that one's obvious. There's just too much to boil it down to a single one. number. We I saw swear. a lot of Stingray with the specials. Baller has been very popular as well, too. And it seems like regardless of the rank mode that we're playing, that Baller provides a lot of benefits, Ashley. It's a great way to give cover, not only to yourself hmm. if you're in a bit of a pinch, <laughs> but it's also a really great way to give cover to a teammate. If you end up getting, you know, double teamed, you got two okay, squids yeah, it coming is the other team you. now. Baller's a great way to get them to go away. <laughs> so it's a really nice Are way there to colors a bit of on the ink of the front of them, not for but them? But also a really great offensive mechanism no. as well. So it's, no. it's a fantastic special, and there's... It's no wonder. So those are the colors of the, the decoration change. Action here in nine. Those specials that seem to provide that temporary invulnerability, like we see with the baller, or that you can stand far away from the action, apply pressure. It seems like there's a defensive component. <laughs> He's already out of water. There's a defensive component, and there's also spatial control, which is something that, of course, we know the stingray being that it can reach everywhere on the map does. But when you have a baller, it forces the opponents to move away. And even if you don't explode and get a splat, it means that your teammates can move up as well. And spatial control really is the next level of being a good Splatoon player. Yeah, it's that combination of turf coverage because that baller explodes, but then also scattering. I appreciate the Nintendo you know, these high -level headphones. Teams. A lot of their success is based upon being able to establish certain parts of a map, and when you have Very to scurry fancy. away because of a baller, it can really disrupt your strategy. Yeah, disrupt is exactly the right word. I mean, disrupting a team's rhythm, what they are most comfortable with, is going to be a great way to knock them off their feet and potentially take the win. As we get set, we've got tower control on the reef once again here. FT win from North America taking on Alliance Rogue from Europe. Got Europe, FT off you go. Green and yellow, Rogue once again. In the green and nine, you know what you love, but what are our loadouts looking like? Well, I want everybody to keep an eye on two players in particular, 2D from North America and Gray from Alliance Rogue. They are both going to be providing ink armor, one of them with a more aggressive weapon in the end zap, the other a more supportive role with that Kensa undercover umbrella. That's a mouthful. And that ink armor, once again, defensive capabilities coming from a special, allowing you to be more aggressive here. Also, it wasn't the other teams, I just realized it was actually a proper lineup of all sorts of shuffling, in. I think. Because right Urza's back again. Ten little points, so plenty of action to go here. Urza trying to charge up those tens of missiles, but gets splatted by Kyo, and actually early advantage on the map. You've got FT win getting a couple of big splats here. Yeah, this is a this is a, a early advantage, so it may not pay off for them in the end, but it is a really good thing for them to have been able to kind of you know they, they scared you just a little bit. Rogue Alliance was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna jump back to base. I a couple of our players have gone down, and now we got a stingray <laughs> out. Well, once again, that spatial control nine ice able to dislodge and disrupt the stingray for Alliance Rogue. I don't know this song either. Like you said, that's just enough. But the trumpet's going on. You're doing it to take a couple people down and build a lead for your team. Give yourself a little breathing room. A counter stingray, not going to allow that to happen. FT win is now taking the lead. They're at the first checkpoint. However, they get dislodged. They're back on the tower. Oh, almost about to clear that checkpoint, but Kiver with a nice double splat nine. And that's going to I would love to hear this where you can actually hear the players there, talking. You know, they're all set up to mic at each other. The give their communications. Them, not, you're just leaving yourself more homework after school when you get back to that checkpoint. 
and we know how balanced these teams are, Ashley. We're a minute and a half in. Neither team has cleared the first checkpoint. Not at all. And this, that is a real testament to how good these teams are, how much they've played against each other. They know their strategies. They know what's going on. That might be a really critical Stingray uh, splat right there. 4-2 on the field for a moment for FT when They did a nice job stopping the advances of the Lion's Throw. Now let's see if they can boost their score. How about Ice? I also want to see where they're an eye tracker and see what are they looking at? Are they keeping an eye on who's dead? How many is left? What the what the standings are? What happened to the fifth member? One of the teams had five members. What happened to them? That was America. The Tenta missiles do it with much less commitment. The Stingrays from Soren have been completely inconsequential so far. It's such a good point. Soren can't What is going on? Did a tree just Did they just birth a tree? This is one of the ones that this what squid is driving vehicles? Ashley, that's the I guess all of them could. Absolutely, and now we can see there's a couple of uh, couple of rogue alliance jumping back to base. They want to get out of the way of that stingray. FT win trying to close the door on this back. Kimber trying to get him off the tower. It's a battle. He bleeds everywhere. Wow. The super jump back here. Wow. How about FT win? Surviving that storm at the end right there. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. Kira jumped onto the tower with a splashdown. He said, there are invulnerability frames as I come down. We are knocking this out no matter what happens. But their ability <laughs> to press forward and use their specials. We say it so much, but you almost can't say it enough. Coordinating your specials in time with the push makes it very difficult for your opponent to slow it down. It really does. It's, it's a thing there. If you can do that with your team, if you can communicate and say, okay, you use your Tenta Missiles, keep that Stingray away. Now let's use Baller. Now let's use Splashdown. I mean, if you can do that all coordinated and all together, it's especially at the end for that last, that very last race to the finish, it's, it's beautiful. And that's what we love about competitive Splatoon. You have those moments like we saw at the end, just pure chaos, but these players are so good at remaining calm through all that ink flying left and right for the most part. Let's take a closer look at a replay from that last match. One of those exciting moments, our instant replay. 224 left and keep an eye on the tower. It's moving right now, ice moves it, but look at all the action that's gonna happen. Walk us through it here, Nine. So you see, of course, they have one person as their designated tower rider, but you see that Shaq was by it as well, meaning that they were going to have at least some pressure there. He pops back off, but they were able to get two people, and as the GG boys said... They really should have showed that again or slowed it down, because exactly I still couldn't follow that, because they were way behind on the explanation. Trying to stop it. And the splashdown at the end, you have to love it. So, FT win, winning a tightly contested match. They were finally able to break the levy in that one and get some momentum, but you saw how close these teams were, because that tower wasn't moving much early on, Ashley. Not at all. It was, it was very, very close for a really long time, but I think a couple of splats, they were very key. Uh, to enable FT Win to finally start making some progress and get through those first couple of checkpoints. Well, let's take a look at our upcoming ranked modes that we will be seeing. We just saw Tower Control. We'll have mm -hmm. Clam Blitz coming up here next. And looking at Clam Blitz, once again, that strategy, we saw the bubble protection from the GG boys, but we've also seen the coordinated super jump with the baller that has become popular. Right, that is something that I think becomes sort of a desperation play. And I said earlier that Clam Blitz has developed. If you just sit everybody back, try to run one baller, and teams are too good. That's not going to work anymore. It's 2019. <laughs> so I think that the way the GG boys played the map is exactly what you're going to see both of these teams try to do. Set themselves up, pin the enemy team in, and just jump in as they will. And with Arowana Mall, there are some tight corridors there as well too, Ashley. So we saw that a lot of 1v1 situations are very important. We saw that from Ty G from the GG boys. You figure it'll be just as vital this time around. Very much so, and I think we'll see more umbrellas, still especially all going like over my head. that tight Same corridor. As uh, the tent umbrella really comes in handy to be able to push an opponent backwards, to keep them off, like off balance, and be able to take them down. But yeah, those one v ones are going to be really key in this uh, in this fight. And Nine, we just saw a shot of that beautiful stage, and how great is it for these teams to compete at this high level, knowing that. These are the best of the best teams. They have gone through the rankings here. They have gone through the battles and the matches and the qualifiers. And here you are on the big stage getting a chance to take on each other. This is the payoff. This is why you practice. This is why you put in the hundreds, the thousands of hours that you do into this game. The audio is coming in. This is why you in. stay up late. This is why you get up early. It is for this chance right here. How many hours was it did Kyo say he had uh, logged into Splatoon? Over 5,000. Yeah. Just that, in Splatoon 2. Well, I know Just you have a lot, Splatoon. Nine. I'm there feeding a bottle late at night, and Nine's online putting in more hours, so I love you know. the work, my man. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Arrow 
on a mall. Gosh, Blitz. Let's take a look at these teams. You do you've got with that? Win in the purple representing North America and Alliance. Still not a master. 10,000 is master. Once again, that clan management taking care of the currency on the map seems to be more important than getting splats at times here, Nine. It is. And there's one person in particular I'm going to point out again. I pointed him out last time. 2D right here playing the L3, the Kensa L3 has a hammer. We have seen the hammer do some pretty great things, and it's honestly the best answer for Tentabrella. We're getting a sneak peek. Speak it into existence. You want to be the hammer, you don't want to be the nail. 2D getting some home remodeling done right there. 4-3 advantage My on the field God. for MG win, but you see a power clamp in the hands of Alliance Rogue right now. Let's see if they can advance it into FT Win territory. And actually, the problem is FT Win can see where that power clam is coming from. You, yes, it is glowing. And so if you, everybody knows who has the power clam and it sort of becomes uh, little kids playing soccer. Everybody's after that power clam. You saw... Oh, come on. You were doing so well this whole time, stream. You can do better than this. Please. I don't want to have to read the YouTube comments. You're trying to connect me. Stream has disconnected. Oh, shoot. It's recording. My whole internet has gone down. What has happened here? You'll have to see this on YouTube archives. Well, that certainly woke me up, didn't it? <laughs> Just taking in all this tune information, just I'll still be recording at the very least. Attempting to reconnect a few seconds ago. What have you done? To type, uh, tweeting about this now. Nothing's functioning. You can see it here. <laughs> right in time for a new tweet by Nintendo of America. Thank you. Okay. I can see the lack of functionality there. Can I get that to pop up? What's going on? You get to be a part of this whole thing. You probably shouldn't. I'm gonna move that away. Um. Well, that's not even how I do it. How do I like reset it to function? Wi-Fi, please. Like, uh, uh troubleshoot it. How do I troubleshoot it? Change adapter options. There we go. Diagnose this connection, please. Come on. It's detecting issues. It's not it's not doing. It's still not reconnecting. This is my life. This is what I deal with. Oh shoot, it just disabled it. Well, that's how it resets, yeah. Attempting to authenticate. Identifying. Resolving problems. So they say. I mean, I get that I wasn't being very interesting in those last final moments, but that's just how it is sometimes, you know? You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. It's fixed it. Okay, cool. It's trying, still trying to reconnect. Will it, though? Kind of. 
It's kind of going. It is, and really the catalyst for that was Gray with the Tentabrella moving in, and then in the middle of all that chaos, hiding in the back. Nobody knew he was there. We are going to enter overtime here because they do have a power slam left on the map, but they're going to need a lot more than one. It's a trade right there. We're going to head to overtime. You hear the siren sounding. Ice has got to be patient. Has a power clam ready to go. They're going to need more than one, though. Hold on, let me. My internet. The going to be a lot becoming available here soon. Oh, can't get the splat on Gray with the Tentabrella. Gray trying to stay alive and weaken the forces. Are we available? No. We are not. Right there. And 